Hello everybody and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Podcast, episode number 21 of 2019. And boy, do we have a jam-packed podcast for you. We're going to be going over everything, everything, pretty much, that was in E3 this year. And to do it, to help me do that, me being Gareth Evans, that is, I have here with me the undisputed champion of the world, Mr. Henry Soggy Feet. Cooper. They are real soggy feet right now. Not so much today. Well, no, today they are damp. Yesterday they were soggy. If you're living in the UK, bad luck. It's been pissing it down. My train's got messed up this morning. Turns out I have a hole in my shoe. Hole in my I'm shoe. A real rare, real bad rough time of it. Time. Yeah. And it's cold. It's cold it's here. Chilly. So I've got me, just got me hoodie on today. Um, so E3 happened, and it's done and dusted for us viewers who weren't able to attend the conference obviously people are still walking around the, sh the show floor right now playing the games that we want to be playing but unfortunately we, we can't do that so um, we we're left with talking about what happened in the conferences so we're going to go through each of them in turn pretty much all of them and talk about the standout moments as well as the standout games for us personally obviously you'll have your own feel free to let us know but we're going to be as comprehensive as possible with this um i'll, I'll probably name as all, all the games that i've got listed today, everything that happened and we can see how well our our guessing was last week i guess see if, yeah see if we see if it was uh, true or not <laughs> what can't the, remember uh, what we even no, said I, we didn't it's There's definitely some stuff we got seriously wrong but so first off, it even counts as E3, the EA conference. It wasn't really, it was the EA like stream that happened the day yeah. before. Not really part of E3, but kind of Yeah, it's part just cap capitalizing on the uh, E3 hype because it's yeah. in the same place. There you go. So first, first off, first part of it was Jedi The Fallen Order and we got a gameplay reveal, which was fantastic, right? Looked good? Definitely good. Well, I'm not sure I'd say fantastic. No? No. What are your reservations? So, I, I think it definitely looks good. Looks like a game I'm going to have fun with. It's Star Wars, like, any any game where I can hear a TIE fighter fly by and it makes that... Yeah, it me. makes that, then yeah. I'm like... Yes. Let's do it. That that gives me the, the goosebumps. But gameplay-wise, it looks like a game I've played before. And that's not, it's not really a bad thing. What's it brings to the table, Henry? There's nothing I mean, new to it, the it, table. It, it, yeah. That being said, that was so it looks like a cross between games like Dark Souls or Sekiro, which I haven't played Dark Souls, but I've played a lot of Bloodborne. It's, it's similar. Yeah. Um, and Sekiro's, again, in, made by the same people, so it's similar. They've got good combat, but they're just so hard that it kind of puts me off. But this, it's taken the good bits of those games, which is the combat and the kind of slightly slower, more methodical approach. Yeah. but nowhere near as hard on it's Star Wars so yeah. that I'm well up for Yeah, because other Star Wars third person action games like Force Unleashed they were a bit more combo heavy Yeah, whereas this looks a bit more considered and I think a lot of people have kind of complained that the combat looks really slow oh, people complaining already uh, yeah right <laughs> but I'm like no I it's like that it's not how I want it and, the, and it I, I think a more close comparison would be something like God of War Yeah, because it's not I wouldn't say it's inspired by Dark, it's, it's the same level of inspired by Dark Souls as God of War is so it's like it's not the same but they've definitely got similarities yeah. God of War the, the your heavy and light attacks are on your triggers and again it's a slower less combo based thing with a bunch of like extra little powers and stuff in there yeah well gameplay aside I think the the gameplay looked gameplay aside the gameplay looked like this is the worst sentence ever <laughs> Um, the actual combat aside, the gameplay looked all right. I mean, it was quite varied. You're climbing up. Um, it was the, yeah. the next day at the Microsoft conference that they showed some different um, gameplay where he was climbing up the side of an AT-80, yeah. getting into that the cool. into the control thing, controls of it, and that that bit looked cool. And there was you know bits where you're sneaking through the um, you know through the um, the panels and stuff yeah. and the uh, and bit of combat, a, um, a bit of Titanfall wall running. Yeah, Titanfall, Wolverine. There's, there's a vast array of different things that you do, and and like 
this is the single player campaign that people want. They want to beat a Jedi, and yeah. this is what Jedi, you know, Jedi's would have to, you know, run on a wall and have to, you know, climb up things and yeah. climb across the, things. The force basically style. means you can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so it it looked it looked interesting. It's definitely something I'd be checking out. Yeah. I won't be pre-ordering. This is EA we're talking about, and I won't be holding my breath either no. because again, this is EA we're talking about. So before we do move on, anything else that you want to add oh, about? I've got the, loads I could say about this one game. Well, I, I do think it looks good. But it didn't blow me away like I perhaps yeah. wasn't expecting. So, because because it's EA, reserve reservations. Yeah, of course. No, reserve your reservations. Reserve God, we're on fire today. <laughs> we are not good at the it's language. This wet weather, it's horrible, man. It's supposed it, to be summer. What's yeah, going it's really on? doing it in. Well, well, from what they've said from like uh, interviews at the show and a few other things going on behind the scenes, they're going to have loads of planets, loads of new ones, and as well loads awesome. of uh, classic ones, which I love. The, the force is mapped to your triggers, which I think is an interesting choice. So pull is on one like trigger it. and push is on the other. So that means like you can it. just do it quite freely, but then your saber combat will be on face buttons. Um, they've got a new, a bit. well, I say new, the ability to do what they're calling force slow, which is when he like grabs them and they just kind of like freeze and the, the, the blaster bolts freeze in the air. Yeah, And I really good. like that, not only because it looks cool gameplay wise, but it's the move Kylo Ren uses in... Uh, the, um, the Force Awakens I was about to say The Last Jedi yeah he uses that at the very beginning of The yeah. Force Awakens and that's I like that film a lot a lot of people don't but that moment is probably the best moment in the movie where he just yeah. f- switches around and freezes it because it's like damn this motherfucker's got he's got power. power so that was cool I like seeing new Force abilities or ones we haven't seen that much yeah. of more than just push pull lightning big jumps Yeah, so that was cool so- I'm still convinced that his lightsaber is one half of a double ended lightsaber I'm convinced. And yeah. if I'm wrong, I will delete this video and everything every time I've ever mentioned it. <laughs> but I'm convinced it's one half we of the We will see. Saber. We will see about that. That's that's your little theory there. But that was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That was re- a gameplay was revealed at EA's conference, but then it appeared in the Xbox conference. I think it appeared somewhere else as well. Yeah, that was a much shorter gameplay thing. It was like yeah. a two minute montage. There was, there was a lot of it. Anyway, moving on, the rest of the EA conference was filled with Apex Legends Season 2, new characters, um, big surprises on the horizon, apparently. Sims 4, new expansion. <laughs> Uh, Sims bore more like <laughs> Madden 20 details Battlefield 5 maps yada 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 F- FIFA FIFA release date for FIFA 20 or whatever I, I don't know I wasn't really that inter- I didn't really pay attention no. they, and then that was it for EA and um, so glad they put Jedi <laughs> Fallen Order at the beginning yeah so, just we, so that everyone so could switch, switch off, off. <laughs> here we go that's what that's what EA had to offer us um, I don't know not very good all in all all no. told anyway let's move on Microsoft's Xbox um, when EA monster. proper kicks off yeah this is this is the monster conference this I think this included more games than that uh, was interesting than any of the others therefore on that tied with a couple of the you know what happened during it kind of took e- E3 for me it was my highlight of E3 a lot of people saying ah oh, they, they, they do nothing special don't do anything uh, there's not you know there was not, not enough game playing blah, blah, blah. but just on sheer weight of the amount of games I was interested in I think this was my favourite one all told so yeah. um, let's start from the start Outer Worlds blew it out there with the, the first one yeah. bold opener because it's not an exclusive but they obviously own Obsidian, so they're yeah. still they're still very confident in it. Yeah, and like. last year they started with Halo, right? Was it Halo they started with? They did, yeah, and did yeah. Cyberpunk. So it was a big, you know, big boots to follow. But mm. they started with Outer Worlds, some more gameplay, some more kind of, <clears throat> sorry, some um, another trailer, some more world setting. Um, just il- the trailer illustrated the cho- varied choices and what kind of different path narrative paths that you can take as a player or whatever so that was interesting I, i'm really looking forward to this we got a release date which was september november november one of them. i can't remember <laughs> september november i said it was all going to be august so i was out out the window with that yeah, i was november, i was wrong really. it was november i think it's november it's coming out i should have written that down i'm sure i wrote it down no, I didn't. It's probably buried somewhere in this document. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. We moved on to then to Bleeding Edge, which was Ninja Theory's next game that leaked a few days before. Four-player co-op thing. Not really that yeah, interested. Yeah, that's weird because Ninja Theory do really good stuff 
did. I'm sure it'd be a really good game. It's yeah, just doesn't it's just it's just a bit unexpected, which, which, which could be a really good thing yeah. because they're not in keep staying in their wheelhouse. They're like, no, we're going to go yeah. do something else. It looks kind of like a hero shooter, kind of yeah. like an Overwatch or a or a um, what was the other one? Team Fortress, that kind of yeah. thing. But yeah, you never know. So. Next, it was Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which actually looked really good. Not my kind of thing, these 2D side-scroller type games, um, but this it did look good. I'll be yeah, honest, the art saying. style looks good. It's got a really charming, but it's almost darkly charming look to it because it's, it's a lot of like light and yeah. particle effects and lighting effects and things that yeah. just look really pretty so that's yeah. really nice yeah i probably won't pick it up but you know credit to the artists and oh, stuff. Yeah. Um, next was minecraft dungeons which was a new announcement for them from the minecraft um franchise minecraft dungeons minecraft meets diablo essentially a dungeon crawler up to four players multiplayer uh, with a style of minecraft I, it just looks interesting. I don't know what it is. It's the kind of game I might be able to play with my daughters. They're gamers. They're into Minecraft. I'm into Diablo. Um, I'm into Dungeon Crawlers. It's the type of game, like a Dungeon Crawler RPG, Minecraft skin on it. It seems like one of those games that could like cross the generation threshold like Legos can. Yeah. Um, I, it seems like something that is that, that can really appeal for, for everyone. I think this is a, a winner. I really do. I think it's a good, a good announcement. Yeah, I mean, Minecraft is one of the most like enduringly popular games because it's so creative people can constantly make new things and m just it's just more of what people like i'm not personally fussed about minecraft but yeah people are and it's more minecraft for you so yeah. that can only be a good thing that inventory and the loots and the special powers and stuff just uh, looking at the trailer it it looks like something i will play and enjoy if it was minecraft skinned or not um it looks simple to pick up it looks like a, a decent co-op game but so that's definitely on my my list of to watch out for so next we got some jedi fallen order um that gameplay we discussed earlier blair witch game now this looked like outlast yeah i thought really it was did, like outlast it? 3 and then before because you've got that camcorder um screen and the kind of green kind of um low light camera you know, uh, night vision. infrared yeah. night vision thing. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and I was like, this is definitely Outlast. Even some of the imagery looked the same. Mm. Uh, but no, it was Burr Witch, the 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 first ever like found footage movie that was yeah that got really big big got really market big. campaign for those youngsters who don't know what it is <laughs> i saw it in the i saw this Blair Witch the movie in the cinema i didn't even know it was fake at the time it well, was only it, when yeah. i saw the credits roll thinking yeah i fucking knew it i guessed it was yeah. fake <laughs> that's that's the reason i haven't seen it is because i I know that it's it's pretty decent. It, it's not real, and I don't really like found footage films. And I don't really yeah. like horror films. So like the magic is lost on me. But that being said, I really like horror games, yeah. and this game does look interesting. It looks interesting. It's not. I don't know. I didn't like Outlast that much. It's the gameplay. It's the like the coward simulator. We just got hired yeah, as people. Hide scene, yeah. It's not really for me. But the game looks all right. Yeah. And then next was the blockbuster for me. It was the moment that <laughs> Cyberpunk was shown off and not only that they revealed the huge secret that's been going for over a year that keanu reeves is playing uh, johnny silverhand johnny silverhand in the game the and that he's already filmed a lot of the stuff for it he's been working on it for like a year or whatever he's been they've been working with them for a year and nobody knew until the moment he walked out on stage or it was released in the okay, announced in the trailer yeah. and he walks out on stage and everyone's like mind yeah. blown it's one of those moments that you will always remember because it's like I, yeah. di I didn't know how much didn't I know. wanted it until it happened. Like, ha what? I don't know what other actor they could bring out and get that same reaction. You can bring out an actor like, say, Will Smith, pretty much universally beloved because he's so charismatic, but it's not... You wouldn't get that kind of reaction of this is yeah. so cool. It's, oh, it's Will Smith, that's fun. But it, Keanu Reeves is just so effortlessly cool in everything. Breathtaking, right? It, you could say. You're breathtaking. <laughs> oh, what a guy. Apparently the guy who said... Your real breathtaking to him is getting like yeah. a, a special edition. They're, they're getting, giving him the, edition, the big <laughs> fancy edition for free. Yeah. Fair play. So I heard they had to call him Mr. Fusion in internal yeah, emails that. and stuff so yeah. that they could keep it under wraps. So let's talk about Cyberpunk 2077. So we, it wasn't really gameplay. We're waiting for the gameplay. We discussed this in the video earlier in the week. The, we're waiting on the gameplay, but people are getting getting to see the gameplay 
at E3 now and they're keeping it under wraps because they want to build the hype for it, yeah. which is fine. So um, there were some flickers of gameplay at the very end of the trailer. It, it's like a few seconds of just something, 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 and then you're moving on. Yeah. We've already had 48 minutes of gameplay. Yeah. It's not It's not like we, uh, we're, I, we're bereft my, of gameplay. Yeah. I was hoping for either gameplay or release date, ideally both, but I'm fine that I got one of them and that was release date. Yeah. That's so I'm satisfied. Um, it's, oh, I mean, every time something new comes out about this game, I, and I think much of the world, just get more excited. Yeah, this this just it's just so deep, and I think we both watched the interview with PlayStation Access yeah. with Pavel Sasko, one of the, um, maybe it's the... Our, uh, the guy who made lead the lead quest designer, quest I think designer. He is, yeah. That's it. Uh, I, and it's so, so interesting because you watch all these behind the, the scenes interviews with these devs, and they're going on all over the place, and you'll be able to find loads of them for, at E3 for whatever game you're interested in. I just find myself drawn more and more to these cyberpunk ones, and the more that they say and talk about it, just the, the just. I don't know, we could go into detail yeah. here, but it's probably better off doing a bit, another video on it. Yeah, but, probably. Um, yeah, it's just it's just the most anticipated game now, and it, they've got a release date, which was um, April, April 16th, 16th yeah. 2020. And my suspicions are that will be pushed, but um, yeah. you never know. But you never know. I love that interview because he is so passionate about it, and he's so humble. Like, she, the, um, the hostess, um, I think it's Ellie or Elle, yeah, L L from PlayStation Access. She kind of says the general, oh, "Thank you, really excited for the game. Thank you for the interview." And then he goes on to an, another like thirty seconds of "Thank, thank you so you much. Everyone. We appreciate this so much as a team. Yeah. Honestly, it means so much. Everyone here watching the gameplay, everyone feed, giving us feedback, and it's like you're you, you're doing it right. You, yeah, you, you know you know exactly they, um, what you're doing. I think the, the developers in CD Projekt Red, and I, I saw an interview with Jeff Keighley, and I think it was Martin Navinsky, one of the founders and uh, CEO of joint CEO of CD Projekt Red and he was saying that we all we see it as art like it, it, we're, what we're crafting here is art we don't churn out the games uh, year every year because it's not about making money it's about make, creating art and yeah. it kind of rings true here with this, the, the, just the passion that this guy had talking about the, the game and and how enthusiastic it was, and and, and the, the way that he just thank you, yeah, thank you for yeah. being interested in what so we're creating honestly here. Yeah, it's not earnestly. about money. It's yeah. not about the money. It's about it's about being that the creators of these the, this art that yeah, and that art, that artistic kind of um, perspective really rings true. And they 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 they've said it before, but they said it in this interview too. Like everything in the world, they want it to feel like it's been handcrafted by a person yeah. and had detail behind it and thought into why these things are like that. And it pays off, you can tell. Like, that spe his specific role um, in developing the game was trying to blur the lines between main and side quests. And that's the same thing, like, everyone knows your main story, they're gonna be the biggest ones with the most budget, the most time, but he's working on the making the smaller ones feel just as important even though they're not necessarily linked to the main narrative and people have been doing it more and more recently in games but it's just great to see that they're so on the ball with yeah, it yeah less gamified and more kind of more immersive that way yeah. isn't it we, we're not you're not considering what you're doing you're just doing it because it's fun yeah so exactly. you don't have to consider oh is this is this my critical path do i have to how much how many more hours i'm going to spend yeah. on this anyway that so that was cyberpunk 77 2077 um finally release day which was awesome keanu Reeves, just a, a standing ovation moment for me it was it was fantastic the most excited i got this whole e3 so that was it moving on spirit fair what was talking about battle toads which was rare's new new game people excited about that not too fast myself the legend of right and then microsoft flight simulator came on which i it looked cool it looked cool some of the best graphics on show at e3 oh, yeah. for sure it sure looked pretty like yeah it's not it's a it's obviously a pc game that's so all we've got to say about it. it yeah yeah it, it looks good. pretty <laughs> and i don't play flight sims yeah. But if you like them, you're probably going to really like this one. Yeah, definitely want to check out if you're a fan of the genre. Yeah, Age of that. Empires 2 Definitive Edition talked about Wasteland 3. Got a sneaky little trailer, which it wasn't sure what it was to begin with. Uh, Wasteland Wasteland 3, it was. It's like a snow themed and all that. Interesting. Psychonauts 2 was something that was mentioned. Yeah, that was along with um, Microsoft absorbing that studio whose name acquiring double fine me. that's it double fine double fine and tim schaefer himself was there yeah. talking about why it, you're it was it's a funny nice little moment between um tim schaefer and was it 
Phil Spencer or was it the other dude? I don't know. Um, but it was, yeah, it was. Um, they had a bit of a back and forth. It was quite funny. Um, yeah, so that was um, that was a, that was a thing. Microsoft yeah. adding their fifteenth um, studio now. Double Fine are a good little studio because they've got such a a distinctive like sense of humour about them. It's all kind of weird and cartoony but kind of dark at the same time with monsters and yeah. like brutal legend uh, so many people didn't play it but i loved it yeah broken age i played i like that well the first part of uh, anyway that was good yeah. um so that was that lego star wars the skywalker saga henry this is one of your highlights yeah weirdly i totally didn't care about this game i didn't need it but they announced it, and I'll, it, it, it made me feel happy. I couldn't help feeling bad. Yeah, yeah I, lo I loved the LEGO Star Wars games. We've all played and loved this LEGO Star Wars games. They're easily the best, uh, well, among the very best of the all, all the LEGO ones, because the LEGO games for everything now. Yeah. But I love the Star Wars ones, and they're doing one through seven, which are already out. You can buy them you know, in their sagas or individually yeah. or whatever. But they're also doing, uh, s no, seven and, no, eight and nine doing eight and nine as well which will be brand new awesome i'm well up for it i'd love uh, i want this lego we'll star wars we'll star see. saga we'll see so there you go dragon ball z Kara kakarot kakarot which everyone That's just their pants over Goku's and i'm not real name <laughs> i mean i mean each their yeah. own it's not for me i like dragon ball z but i don't really need this game because well most dragon ball z games the combat's pretty much the same yeah it's um, I don't even know what kind of genre they are. Are they third-person action? Well, yeah, there's most of them, apart from most recently, Dragon Ball Fighters. Fighters that's 2D uh, fighter. But then gener the other ones are usually third-person fighters with loads of over-the-top moves and stuff. But this one's supposed to be like an RPG in some yeah. ways. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting, but it does just look like the other ones, yeah. like Budokai and Tenkaichi. But we'll see. So moving on, the next one was a, was a bit of an eye brow raiser for me it's a game called 12 minutes right and this let me read out the the elevator pitch for this this is an interactive thriller about a man trapped in a time loop it involves living and dying in course of 12 minutes all of them spent in a three room apartment then your character wakes back up in time with back in time with a wakes back in time well, who wrote this in time <laughs> with a memory of what happened and tries to survive those 30 minutes so the synopsis of the game is you take the role of a husband on what should be a romantic evening with your wife the night turns into a nightmare when the police when a police detective breaks into your home accuses a wife of murder and beats you to death only for you to find yourself immediately returned to the exact moment you opened the front door stuck in a 12 minute time loop doomed to relive the same terror again and again unless you can find a way to use the knowledge of what's coming to change the outcome and break the loop an interactive narrative that blends the dreamlike suspense of the shining with the claustrophobia of rear window and the fragmented structure of memento i am in yeah that whole concept sounds really interesting i, I, yeah. I like time loop things like it, like groundhog day it's brilliant i think it's really interesting concepts but the gameplay well, like, well the trailer is just the apartment or yeah. the, just the the room and the well, camera kind of yeah the, the, ca in. the camera is like a, it's like a top down top thing, down yeah. camera and it's an indie looking game for those of you who might get too excited about this thinking that's, that's some sort of something that's not it's an indie game yeah. so you know that's a disclaimer out there developed by Luis Louis Antonio I'm not sure if he what he's done in the past Annapurna Interactive are publishing so and they've put out uh, Edith Finch didn't they I think Annapurna right yeah what remains of Edith Got Finch you. it's out in likely out in 2020 that's what it says in the website it's very likely out 2020 so not confirmed it's going to be Xbox PC and PlayStation 4 and it plays like a narrative uh, interactive thriller right so it's a point and click type of thing yes so there's maybe very limited gameplay. Still, it should be pretty good. Yeah, because point and clicks, the, what makes those interesting is if you've got loads of environmental things to interact with. But if you're locked into, what was it, three different rooms, yeah. there's probably not that much you can interact with. But if they can use the time loop stuff yeah. to make it interesting, I'm on board. I think it looks really, really cool. I'm a huge fan of the film Greyhound, Groundhog Day. Yeah. And um, it reminds me of that. So uh, I'm in. There so next up, Way to the Woods was uh, talked about now. I don't even know a lot about that. Gears 5 had a decent um, cinematic trailer, I should say. Yeah, there was... 
there was one where they showed off a new game mode which is like a three player co-op thing called yeah. Escape which looks pretty cool yeah, they showed off some cool. new weapons in that but it's a CG thing so I don't really know and then there was another one with the main girl who was in Gears 4 but now she's your main protagonist, protagonist with like weird psychological things going on mm. like seeing other characters like coming out of her and stuff yeah. it's a very abstract yeah. kind of concept yeah no gameplay though but we did get a release date that's out sometime in September I think I can't remember exactly when there you go next up Dying Light 2 now this is one of your picks yeah I feel like there's not really anyone talking about Dying Light and it's making me sad I really like Dying Light you know what I, th I think behind the scenes on the show floor it's getting a lot of game of the show Game of E3 awards, just like Cyberpunk did last year. Yeah, and so I think people are talking about it, but there's there's no there's not a lot of media coverage. It was one of my highlights from last year's E3 when yeah. they when they announced it with um, Chris Avalon coming on stage and stuff. Oh my god, yeah. give me that game, give me that game now. I loved the first Dying Light because the gameplay was really good. It was a really good mix of stuff that other games have done, but not quite as well. So that there's first person melee based combat, which was really really well done parkour elements without feeling too like dizzying or weird because it is in first person you can obviously get a bit flustered uh with those are crafting stuff and it's zombies and then the nighttime stuff made it really interesting so I'm, I'm up for a sequel just based on that but one of the weaknesses of the original is that the story is a bit flat but yeah. now they've got chris avalon who's worked on everything mm -hmm. every good game you've ever played yeah right <laughs> if you've played at least one good game in the last 10 20 years yeah. you've played one of his so it's made by Techland, who are Polish, yes, I they believe. Are. Yep. It's Polish, yeah. Uh, and they're all. This one's all about your character choices and inform that informing the game world. So mm. what you, the choices you make with the different factions and groups and stuff, will then somehow impact the overall environment. Mm -hmm. And they're giving you loads of options in terms of gameplay on how to get through levels and stuff. It just looks great. Yeah, consequences to your actions yeah. and stuff. That kind of thing that I'm all about in games. Uh, tie that in with a first person thrilling get you know adventure you know the, the night time the zombies are out killing you and then yeah. in the daytime you're doing your RPG stuff give it me action RPG yeah. give it me all day and the, what I noticed about this one over the last one is it seems to have a slight like metro vibe yeah. in the sense that in the first one it was a bit more recent after the outbreak has happened but this one I think it's a bit it's a bit further, further on. along in the mm -hmm. post apocalypse so people are sort of sort of surviving but everyone just looks a bit crap everyone's kind of <laughs> made like got scraps of all of them uh, yeah. all over them they're kind of um scavengers yeah scavenger of thing, kind yeah. of lifestyle it's it meant to be coming out in q2 2020 so it's not too long yeah not too far not now too far. A, lo a lot of a lot of games coming out at that time of year so next up was forza horizon 4 which was featured which featured a new lego speed champions mode so it was like lego forza horizon 4 one yeah. of the games best known for its high detail yeah. graphics and they're making the cars now out of lego <laughs> i must admit i looked at that and i was like oh, it's forza horizon don't really care kind of stopped really paying attention then i clocked back i was like Smashing through Lego buildings looks really damn yeah, fun. It looks that looks fun. fun. There you go. State of Decay 2 Heartland, which is a DLC which was announced and released. I think, I, I don't know if it was announced prior or released prior or whatever, but they, they featured it. I've actually picked it up. Um, I've actually started playing it because mm. I'm you know, a fan of State of Decay 2, played it in the past, and I played it this week. I tried it, and yeah, it's State of Decay, and it looks cool. It's a lot harder. The, the the zombies are more out to get you this time but um, yeah I've only played a couple of hours but I'm into it I'm into yeah. it I like it next up Fantasy Star Online 2 don't really know much about that I think that's the one where it's a massive MMO thing in the east in Japan yes. and Asia and stuff and now it's the first time it's here in, in the west there you go so people are excited I don't really know anything about Cross, it Crossfire X is the same kind of thing it's like yes. the eastern version of um, it looks a bit like Rainbow Six from yeah. when I glanced over it's it. It's like a huge game that was out in like 2007 or something in the East and that has only just been announced to be coming over to... It's like Counter-Strike of, yeah. the, of the East, apparently. And um, there you go, Crossfire X. Uh, Tales of Arise. Don't know what that is. Um, didn't really catch my eye. Borderlands 3 was featured... And then Elden Ring, which was the George R. R. Martin collaboration with From Software. Yes. And it was a concept trailer more than anything. Yeah, it's not even a story cinematic trailer. It's very much a concept trailer. Yeah. Of showing weird stuff. This the old lady with like an arm. Yeah. 
I thing going on. And I can see why people were criticising this year's E3 for not, not having enough gameplay. It kind of makes sense. But, yeah, I, I get it. I do feel um, that way. I do, I, I, so I don't, I've got no feelings for this game at all because I'm not a huge fan of the Soulsborne series. I'm a huge fan of George R. R. Martin, but I've never seen him collab on a game in the past. And I don't know what anything about this world or the gameplay or anything. Yeah, this is... It's the George. I'm with you. The George R. R. Martin stuff sounds exciting, but I don't. I'm not really into the FromSoft uh, style or genres. And this isn't enough to get me excited because yeah. it's just a. It's a nothing trailer to me because I. It, I don't, it means yeah. nothing. To it's me. just a placeholder for me in my heart right now. Yeah. Just, just like let's just see where this goes. So that was it. Pretty much what we've got lit written down here. We, we talked already about the Double Fine Productions uh, acquisition by Microsoft. Then they talked about the Xbox. Game Pass coming to PC, and this and was another moment where I was like, "Yes, this is what I've been waiting for—a decent subscription of decent games on my PC." And I subscribed to it the very next day, in fact, which was cool. I also little inside information by Metal Shark: if you've got X Xbox Gold membership and you upgrade your Xbox Gold membership, or you upgrade to one of the Game Passes, which like the the Ultimate Edition Game Pass, which is one of the new services the ultimate ultimate game pass you get your xbox games and your pc games as part of the subscription service for one price as well as your ex, uh, as well as your gold if you upgrade for one dollar to the ultimate to the premium ultimate pack then your your gold time games with gold upgrades at the same time so you instead say if you've got like 12 months of gold and you take the one dollar trial for the ultimate pass you get 13 months of ultimate pc ultimate which is like 15 dollars a month something like that that all sounds super confusing there's it's a, very there's a confusing. lot of different tiers it's the, the, it was very confusing i finally wrapped my head around it but then then i managed to get seven 17 months of ultimate game pass for 44 pounds I mean that's a great deal because that's because that's I bought, like one I, bought AAA I bought game. a twelve month gold pass added that to my account and then it great and then I ordered I had three months free from Metal Shark because he sent me and I'd, I had already subscribed for the PC game pass which is one pound so so I it cost me forty three pounds to that point and then I upgraded it all the whole thing all all those months that I had for all those services upgraded for one pound took me to seventeen months of Xbox Ultimate game pass for 42 three 44 pounds but anyway little tip there for those of you who are if looking you can to translate that <laughs> <laughs> any more info ask metal shark on the um on the discord and uh, then they talked about the project x cloud it's coming to public beta in late 2019 and they talked about an elite controller which was a great trailer but um i'm not it, sure <laughs> yeah it's just like car adverts it's just yeah. dramatic Check. camera angles mm. and buzzwords yeah uh but there you go if you want to spend 170 quid on if, the if controller you're into that cool 170 quid apparently it is anyway. um and then it was project scarlet which was disappointing they didn't talk more about yeah. um so this is the successors to the xbox one they're not really they didn't really go into detail that much oh there's an ssd it's going to be four times faster it's going to be 40 times the speed it's going to be yeah. awesome show us it show me show me yeah show me the game no and then it was um then there was the halo which we haven't mentioned yet the last one was the halo yeah trailer, ha halo right? infinite announcement and i'm very much in the same place with halo as i am with gears because i loved them back in the 360 era but since it got past gears 3 and halo uh, I liked Halo Reach and ODST, but Halo 4 was a bit of a drop-off. But they've not captured what I liked about them. Yeah. It, really. I, don't, I can't even put my finger on what it is. But the, the Halo trailer was cool. He's like, flo cool. Chief is floating in space. A, a guy gets him up and pulls him back in. And they're like, oh no, something's going on. There's a Halo ring with a blown out part of it snapped. I like seeing a Halo ring in a Halo yeah. game because it's like, there we go, that, that's what Halo's about. It's weird that is Halo. monolithic technology that they're like, whoa! No mistake in this? that. It's a Halo. So that was it pretty much for our roundup of the Xbox or Microsoft conference. My favourite one because, like I said, I'm interested in, in so much more in that one than anything else. So there you have it. We, we're entitled to our opinions. You might not agree with me, but did you enjoy it? Let us know down in the comments. Next up was the Bethesda conference. So... First up, <laughs> for, I mean, 
this this is funny this is funny right fallout 76 they announced human npcs come to fallout 76 which is actually a good thing they needed that all along they need quests they need um dialogue trees great and then they announced battle royale for fallout 76 i mean it's it's like it's like it's such a bad car crash it's such a flaming yeah. mess of bullshit that they're just throwing everything oh what can we do like yeah. just panicking in, in these conference meetings thinking what the fuck can we do we'll just throw everything at it yeah. see what sticks it's like, we'll try battle royale let's try that it's like throwing <laughs> fireworks at a tire fire to try and put it out like it's just not gonna work i mean i don't know i mean they could do battle royale pretty well they could do a decent version of it, it it'll add value to the people who already bought it you can't criticize it for yeah. that npcs come in will get me playing again i will try it again when the npcs come not today todd <laughs> you i'm gonna wait till the npcs not arrive today not today <laughs> yeah um yeah smarmy todd as usual on stage talking about in his smarmy way um i don't know i used to i used to believe i used to i used to like todd but now no, he just gets but up there and lies it's just an another one of the uh the, yeah he did <laughs> <laughs> there you go so n enough said about fallout 76 they talked about elder scrolls blade they announced a new game ghostwire tokyo with a very kind of weird trailer again no gameplay just she told us what it was about i don't know if you you've seen this at no, all i've not seen this like one. people are disappearing in tokyo and it's it's a decent looking game but again no, no gameplay no nothing oh is this the one with the, 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 kooky, with it in? Yeah. the kooky dancing yeah yeah i've seen that bit and it's just what's her, her name uh ikumi nakamura, ikumi nakamura. she's she having a great time she, i love her fun. She, she's she great, great. <laughs> so these this is from um makers of the evil within two um and they are called uh tango gameworks so you know uh, i mean still again another question mark another placeholder what is this we don't know nothing about yeah. it it's going to be two or three years out at least i just thought more details next e3 well, as look, usual this is the one that's by shinji mikami that might have been as you said uh, evil within three but i mean it, it's, it's his brain he's weird yeah. so it's going to be interesting might not it be lo good it, it looks intriguing so the trailer looks intriguing but then again spooky just rub some juice off you yeah. yeah it's going to be some spooky weird body horror stuff so it could be cool yeah so next up elder scrolls online nah more content for this uh this game's a service brilliant commander keen mobile not interested but it was talked about elder scrolls legends um what even is that don't know probably no don't idea. care <laughs> um is it is it what, part what of the are we? oh this is, is this one's the card game uh, it's a free-to-play digital collectible card game. Of course it is. God, <laughs> we all have to have a card game these days. Yeah. Next up, Rage 2 was talked about. Wolfenstein Cyberpilot, whatever the hell that is. I didn't even watch this. Is it that one early the VR us. one? But that might be... Uh, yeah, VR experience. Yeah, yeah. It's the VR um, well, you, you can You can drive in a big... One of the Nazi robot things. I can't remember what they're called. They've got a name. Yeah. Wolfenstein Youngblood again, a game that's coming up soon that was talked about. And then both of our, one of our joint highlights of the conference, or like the, the, the best thing in the Bethesda conference yeah, full stop, sure. was a game called Deathloop. Unfortunately, again, this was another concept trailer type of thing. Uh, a bit of a story trail, I guess. So let me read the blurb. I've got here. Deathloop transports players. This is from the makers of Dishonored and Prey. This is Arcane Studios. Very prestigious. Very, very good um, development team who know what they're doing, yeah. right? So Deathloop transports players to the lawless island of Black Reef in an eternal struggle between two extraordinary assassins. Explore stunning environments and meticulous design levels and immersive gameplay experience that lets you approach every situation any way you like, a la the way that Dishonored does. Hunt down targets all over the island in an effort to put an end to the cycle once and for all. And remember, if at first you don't succeed, die, die again. Death loop. So again, another Groundhog Day type thing. Yeah. You die, you start again. It's 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 kind of done a lot in games already. It's it's the road like format, right? Yeah. It's it's what road like is. Like you yeah. die and you try again, but with it, the additional knowledge and stuff that you've gained. Yeah, it's basically making a concept of a vi uh, video game respawns like a narrative thing, like yeah. a reason for it happening. It, it kind of fits games really well, I think. This type of gameplay, and they did do it 
in the past themselves, Arcane, with Praise DLC called Moon Crash, which was a roguelike experience. And some people said that it was a better experience than the core game itself. Mm. So maybe they, after making the Moon Crash DLC and seeing how well received that was, maybe that was the point where they decided, let's do a whole game around yeah. this kind of loop. Um, so I don't know, we don't know a lot of details about it yet. Is it PvPVE? Can it be like two players against one another versus the environment because it's two assassins? Or yeah. is it just the traditional, you're one of the <coughs> assassins, you choose which one you want to be, and you either, one of the sa- assassins is trying to destroy the death loop, the other assassin is trying to sustain the death loop. Yeah, because they've got two opposite uh, perspectives. One thinks they're free in this world, and one thinks they're trapped. One, yeah, one's you say, one wants to protect it, one wants to break it. I think it looks really interesting but again we don't have any yeah as a concept it's really interesting but we don't have any gameplay but they've got like weird powers which we've seen in in dishonored like the guy he does like a force push type move against one of the uh, his his opponents one of the enemies yeah and then girl like teleports to a wall and starts running on alongside it's got like a 60s noir kind of vibe to it in some parts like the music where it's just like little musical stings and then something happens yeah there you go so um, not much else is known about that and then we have the final game from Bethesda Doom Eternal which Henry's super excited about and he's about to tell us more about right it right I loved Doom 2016 it's exactly what Doom should have been it was taking it back to what was good about Doom just classic running and gunning not having to worry about too much keep moving keep killing keep the the ball of fun rolling now this one is is taking the franchise forwards in the way i think it absolutely should it's the natural progression of it it's just more stuff it's more of what you wanted more guns more metal the soundtrack's awesome again i've barely heard any of it but yes shredding riffs and just dirty synth wobbles I, I'm, so, I'm so keen yeah and they act, well, it's one of the few things which actually got decent gameplay and they actually had someone who could play the game because I watched some, uh, some of the other stuff <laughs> I think some of the Outer Worlds gameplay I was like who's playing this mm. You either the shooting's rubbish or you can't hit a damn thing yeah. but this Doom person they knew exactly what they were doing yeah. and it was really satisfying to watch someone do it so effortlessly which was great um You've got a bunch of new, well, not a bunch, but a handful of new abilities. You've got like a grappling hook, which they call the meat hook, which is metal as fuck. Right. You shoot it. It's on the bottom of your shotgun. You shoot it. And you like grapple to them and you blow their face off. You, you know, it's Sweet. simple, bloodthirsty gore. Doom guys, you can see him now in third person cutscenes. Like they, right. you, you start off in first, you do a thing, and then it will like pull out, and you can actually see him, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of. Uh, purists will probably get upset about I'm not really that fussed yeah the, my favourite bit of the whole gameplay thing I saw is he goes up to this big sh- um, spaceship cannon thing pushes the cannonball out of the way he just boots it sits in the in the the slot where the ball goes and just cannonballs himself into a, into a building Beautiful. he just launches himself it's great Beautiful. I'm so I'm, I'm 100% in for Doom Eternal um, it's been released this year is it uh, or next year I think it's a next year I have got it written down somewhere let me just have a little look oh no I haven't got it written down the 22nd of November is coming out this yes. year yes there we go 22nd of November so that's not too long so yeah it's this year As uh, it's a very oh god the end of this year is looking so packed we've written all the Busy releases yeah. on the on the whiteboard and oh my god there's loads of games coming out this year and early next year too and it's starting to uh, I don't know it's look like, looking like a good year a lot of games that's true um, so the last thing that Bethesda we have to t- discuss about Bethesda's showcase was they revealed their Orion software which is a middleware package that is aimed to help improve the speed and latency for playing games over a stream okay what what why why do we need this yeah. what, what's this is this for us yeah. is this for other people it's, it's, this it's, is for can, Stadia right you can apply this to any game apparently it's not part of stuff I don't why are Bethesda doing that I I don't know I don't know I don't know <laughs> but anyway that was it that's a thing and Bethesda wrapped up there Bethesda try harder I'm, I'm sorry it just wasn't good enough no Elder Scrolls no um, Starfield we, yeah. I know you're, you're holding back the information until you're ready 
But there was nothing really that exciting just, here. De- Death Leap was good. Yeah. But that was the one only highlight for me. But Doom Eternal yeah. being the, uh, the other one for you. But I think I know they said they weren't going to bring Elder Scrolls to the show. But if they just either gave us a name or said where it's set, that will satiate people for ages. Because yeah. then all of the uh, Elder Scrolls YouTubers can put out video after video with like lore speculation. And here's yeah. everything you need to know about uh daggerfall or whatever exactly get people excited there, for you it. Go. Oh, there you go anyway let's move on the next one was the devolver digital conference which was a pre-recorded affair just like last year with i can't remember the name of the um the actress who plays the devolver ceo woman it's, she's she's funny she's a good actress and yeah, she's funny. it's 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 a funny it's a, always a funny a fun kind of a take on the industry uh, the way they devolve it do it anyway it's worth watching itself not just for the games because the games themselves i mean they're in- independent games and they're you know they're a niche type of thing so they're not going to win any awards or take many headlines but the devolver thing itself is just great to, to watch so what we got uh, among them were full guys ultimate showdown devolver boot bootleg thing carry on Enter the Gungeon. Oh, about. carry on. I really like the Cross Arrows. Just to interrupt yeah, sure. You. It's you, you. It's like a horror film type thing, well, game. But you're the monster, like a. Oh, that looked good. Yeah, yeah. you're like a, a. It's a horrible, grotesque red thing. Blob. It's, yeah, it's a really unpleasant yeah. looking, technically horrible creature. And then you're going after the the teens in yeah. the, in the lake house, and you're going to kill them all. That looks good. Which I'm I'm, I'm well that up for. The Messenger was talked about, and then my highlight of this was my friend Pedro, which we'd seen in the past before, got a release date, and it's been released in seven days' time. Yes, A week really- today. June the 20th, we will get our hands on my friend Pedro, and this is one of those games that we discussed last week, um, and it looks really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be picking up my friend Pedro, I think. Cool, like, side-scroller shooter with time mechanics we can slow down time and and a banana and why a banana. not and lots of yellow so yeah. it, 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 it looks just fun. looks seriously fun looks fun so next we're going to discuss the pc gaming show and i'm going to run through a, li- a huge list of games stopping where i see fits because you didn't see this you're not a pc gamer um no i clocked a couple of them but it was after the fact i didn't watch yeah. it live or anything i just looked up some cool yeah ones. there was no um mountain blade unfortunately but what we did get was Evil Genius 2, Vampire of the Masquerade, Bloodlines 2. Which looks again. really good. Which I haven't played the original, but that looks really starting good. starting to look good. Storm Answer, Chivalry 2, um, which looks a lot better than the original. Mosaic, Ghost, Midnight Ghost Hunt, Unexplored 2, A Way for His Journey, Mutant Year Zero, Conan and Conquered, which has already been released. Moons of Madness, Conan Chop Chop, which was... Um, <laughs> Uh, a prank on April the 1st saying oh we're doing this um, this Conan Chop Chop game uh, lo and behold it's actually <laughs> coming now they're actually it's making Conan Chop Chop it looks a little bit like um, what's that survival isometric survival game that I I can't even remember what it's called now um, oh, Reign of Giants is one of the DLCs as well uh, oh uh, Dead Cells no oh yeah no I'm getting confu- accused um, it's not Dead Cells at all <laughs> it's not Reign of Giants is the Dead Cells you are absolutely right it's Don't Starve though okay. Reign of Giants Don't Starve oh, I know. Looks Dead Cells is Rise of the Giants I thought something like something about Giants yeah. anyway we're all kind of both right so Last Oasis was talking about Age of Wonders Planetfall Zombie Army 4 The Remnant from the Ashes was one that caught my eye again I mean there's some some decent yeah, gameplay for this. They're describing that as like the Dark Souls of shooters. I think yeah. that's which which sounds really interesting, and yeah. it looks quite well. Cool. Dark Souls in the, in the sense that you can have instances with your friends, and they can join you to be yeah, bad yeah. guys and stuff like that. And it, it looks interesting because it's a shooter and third person shooter. It's fine. I like it. Griftlands was the next game. Planet Zoo was one that caught my eye. It looks nice. It looks super nice. Uh, but that's all I've got to say about that. Shenmue, Shenmue Three, which people are making all the clickbait videos now on YouTube about it being exclusive to Epic Store, and like, oh god, how upset are we now about yeah, but it? Epic. At least it's not exclusive to the Dreamcast. Well, people are upset about <laughs> yeah, people are upset about this one because um, it was crowdfunded and people wanted yes, it on Steam. Yeah. Um, so there you go, people are upset. 
and probably rightfully so yeah because they want on the, on the steam but there you go people are upset again on the internet uh, lo and behold <laughs> what Kel- else is Kel- there um, Shenmue 3 yeah I've got Shenmue 1 and 2 now on the Game Pass I've installed it I'm ready to go rearing I've played I think it's the first one that I played on my Dreamcast so uh, I'm going to play through it and then ho- hopefully if I get time I'll, I'll play through them and I'll be ready for Shenmue 3 when it comes the trailers themselves for Shenmue 3 didn't look cutting edge there was criticism around the very first trailer that the facials looked really bad this again doesn't look great it's not a triple A game though that's what you got to really no remember. yeah that's it is crowdfunded so there you go um, but that is on my list Songs of Conquest Warhammer Vermintide 2 got some sort of announcement Per Asper Ancestor Shuma kind of Odyssey was talked about Patrice Desolée doing the rounds as usual we've seen a lot of this game now it's it's from the original maker of the Assassin's Creed franchise yes. who is now going further back in time and you, you this ape and you've got a you've got to survive as a colony of apes and kind of evolve yeah. into the future well i caught a bit of an interview with him about uh the game and he was like oh, so like, oh why, why are you going to uh, why are you going you know to prehistory and he's like well I want to do a third person like open world action adventure game and doing it with a 35 person team you can't build rome because when we like when we did that we had like a thousand person team so we have to go right we'll go way back we'll do it whether we don't have to fill massively massively populated cities or anything yeah and then he was like yeah it's not not as hard not as easy as as we thought it would be because there's a whole other set of challenges because it's yeah. it's a living world it's like organic and trees and all that sort of stuff which was pretty funny it's one it's one of on my radar i'm not sure that it's going to be great the, I, I, it's just something about the animations that look yeah. off to me i don't know it looks too much like a um there's so many games that are made by independent teams that look so polished they could be triple a's this then, is an independent yeah. team kind of thing it doesn't look anywhere near the quality yeah that that's what I think. Like you're right, and the animation is just looking a bit kind of junky. But conceptually, I think it's really interesting. I yeah. like the idea of being in that time period because it's all about the gameplay. It could yeah. be great. Yeah, it could play. be awesome. Auto Chess, Chris Tales, Val Faris, Borderlands Three, Man Eater, Terraria. The huge content update annou- announced, and it's the very last content update coming to Ter- Terraria. Telling Lies was the next one, and oh my god, am I excited for this one? So Telling Lies is from the creator Sam Barlow, who previously made um, what is that freaking game called? <laughs> um, we had this conversation the other day. Yeah. Oh <laughs> God Almighty. Um, Telling lies. What did Thinking. he make? Um, you'll, you'll find it. You'll find it. It's called the um, Jim Sambalo. Her story. Her story. Her story. God, I'm right, my brain. You get like an hour into talking nonstop, and your brain just goes to shit. Yeah. We're gonna have to take a break in a sec. Anyway, um, so telling lies is the follow-up to her story from Sambal. if you played her story then you probably loved it like i did uh, it's it's a short in the interact um experience but oh my god is it great let me read you the telling lies synopsis thing here the game uses live action full motion video for of four people uh as part of video calls made between them and the player will need to use tools from the game to piece together events of what statements may uh, what statements may be lies to determine the overall mystery so the the pre- premise of this game is that you're you're somebody who's stolen a cia it's a cia or like one of these government agencies uh, hard drive right and you've got access to these calls that these four people made between each other right something really bad went down and you've got to figure out the mystery of who's to blame what happened and all this and th- the only way you could do that is by putting a s- searching for these video clips of these calls that these people made together and trying piecing together the evidence in some sort of investigation that you that you conduct yourself and the beauty of this game is you don't play any protagonist you play yourself right you are the protagonist and the gameplay happens in your head right you it, it's the only way that i can um pitch pitch it and explain it because like you you could become a detective trying to figure out what's going on here it's like you, it's the detective simulator whereas you you embody a detective and you, you're searching these video 
calls like you do in her story you're searching these these videos and then you pick up on anything that they might be saying take a note of it and conduct do a search term in that and see what videos get result um and the results of that search term which videos feature that search term so eventually you go get into the spider web and you get deeper and deeper and you spiral down into eventually finding out you know the 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 story and what happened if you're interested in if that kind of pitch appeals to you at all definitely check out her story it was one of the best games it most interesting unique games that i've ever played that is for sure and more interestingly about telling lies is there's four characters one's played by logan logan marshall green um he's appeared in the oc and 24 in the past if you um recognize him alex Shan, alexandra ship who plays storm in x-men apocalypse and beyond so that actress yep you might recognize her kerry bichet who's the one that i recognize from the tv show halt and catch fire which is an awesome tv show it's about making um technology and, and computers back in the 80s it's awesome if you get a chance to watch halt and catch fire and lastly angela Saraf Sarafian and she plays clementine pennyfather in westworld you might recognize her from westworld Westworld fans and yeah I can't say anything enough good things about Sam Barlow and what he's trying to do I am into it it's not your typical type kind of game it's not going to be for it's everyone uh, full motion video as well right full motion so it's video. not just mocaps characters that these actors properly well are, acted yeah they're like properly well acted shot and filmed with real cameras and stuff yeah it's essentially detective simulator and it sounds really cool it is, it is so good it, it's a different experience you could do it with your you play it with your your other half yeah. and she wouldn't be thinking she'd play in a game yeah she would be totally love into stuff it. like that anyway so that is it for my i think i'm we've got warframe update genesis noir el hijo hey i said it right el hijo and Baldur's gate through also featured in the pc gaming show and that is it for the pc gaming show and we are going to move on after the break we're going to have to take a short break now we're going to get some lunch and come back we're going to go head over talk about ubisoft square enix nintendo as well as take your questions and then maybe do some comments from youtube so we'll be back in just a second don't go anywhere and welcome back it's as if we never went anywhere and uh, we are back after a nice relaxing lunch we're a little bit more more like relaxed than we were before right a bit fuller <laughs> a bit fuller we had a, had a cup of tea refreshed ourselves a little bit and now we're back to talk about ubisoft and their press conference it's press conference always fuck that up so first up watchdogs legion we got Watch some Dogs actual Legion. gameplay of Watch Dogs Legion. And Plenty of. This was um, one of the games we featured this week in the content on the channel. The game's story focuses on the efforts of the London branch of hacker, hacker group DeadSec, because there's multiple branches. Why not? The, the hackers, they're a big, big organisation. Yeah. In combat combating a new authoritarian regime, regime that has taken control of London and, rest, and the rest of the United Kingdom, thanks to the advanced surveillance system known as CTOS, to assist in this, the group recruits allies from across the city, and that's why we're a legion, because uh, we get to recruit anyone we like to play as, which is one of the main gameplay features that we're really excited for. Each character in the game will have their own background and skill set and provide more dynamic influence to the game's narrative as the story progresses. Now, it looked interesting. It's still question marks for us yeah. over whether they're going to realise this potential in the way that we believe that they they should be able to right yeah it's a really cool concept being able to recruit anyone and then play as them because you've there have been games with recruiting uh, tools before but the the idea that every single person is playable with full voice acting full animations mm. unique skills and everything and everyone's supposed to be completely different it's a really great concept yeah well i heard that the, to achieve that technical feat they're going to have voice modulation in terms of the they're going to have a set amount of voice actors and then they're going to modulate their voice, voices to fit to um, the, it's all the different characters yeah. uh, this kind of might work if it's kind, if they're all um, procedurally generated in a way or they're, they're given a set amount of um, possibilities and then they just mix and match as as they go i can see it working it's still a lot of work and let's hope they pull it off because i really i do want i don't want games to advance and i want i want things to um 
to be brought to the table, right? Yeah, oh, well, that's all we want. Innovations, <laughs> that's what we need. <laughs> innovations in gaming. Bringing um, something new to the table. If you do want a full rundown on Watch Dogs Legion and our response to that, check out this week's video that we did. I think it was Monday. Was it Monday? Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Mondays was Cyberpunk. Yeah, it was Tuesday. Um, so next up, we got some info about Rainbow Six Siege. Year 4 Phantom Sight launches this year. For anybody who's interested, not myself, not for myself, but there we go. Then we got some some awesome, an awesome presentation by John Bernthal, aka the bad dude out of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and he brought his dog onto and stage. His dog, yeah, his dog is what which made was super it. cute. <clears throat> he, I, I have no idea what he said. I was too busy looking at his his pooch. Yeah, checking out his puppy. But um, yeah, yeah, it was it was it was decent. It was is a very nice moment. Um, <clears throat> Ubisoft painted themselves as like a family oriented thing even Igamo came on stage at the end and said uh, we, we like it to be a com um, gaming to be um, apart for all the family and my wife was sitting there thinking what the hell is he on about this is bullshit <laughs> this isn't this is this so empty <laughs> she um, yeah she smelt the bullshit a mile off the Igamo so uh, try harder next time <clears throat> yep um Next up was Tom Clancy's Elite Squad, which is a new mobile game. As if there weren't enough Tom Clancy games already. That's the third out of the first four that we've talked about. This is another Tom Clancy game. Three of the four have been Tom Clancy games. So um, this is one that included Splinter Cell Sam Fisher. We didn't get a Splinter Cell, but we got some Sam Fisher. Damn it. I mean, right. <clears throat> no, no one wants this. And I don't really get why they're doing it. So I've just got a freeze, frame, out the a freeze frame of John Berthold's like He's such a... He's a he's a good. He's dog. so well behaved. He's not freaking out. He's just quite relaxed. But when when people start cheering, he's a bit like, "Whoa, what's, what's a going bit on? jumpy." Yeah. But he, he's a good boy. Yeah. Why? 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 Doing I this mean, mobile least? mobile people want to play mobile. It's going to make them a load of money. I mean, go for it. You need to make money. Do what you like. It's your company. Do what you what, like. What a waste of a potential. Sam Fisher appearance in a real game. <laughs> well, we might get a proper one. Eventually. Where's our proper games? Hopefully. God damn it. We're so entitled. Give us our proper games, not these mobile stuff. Yeah. Right. Next up, Just Dance 2020 was announced, la launching November the 5th this year. <clears throat> and you can still get it on the Wii. I've just looked oh, on really? the Wikipedia. You can still get it on the Wii. Well, you know, is this one thing you can rely on every year? It's a new Just Dance, and they uh, they had their presentation, people dancing on stage like they yeah. do every single time. So, you know, if there's one thing you can rely on. It's Makes for an just entertaining dance. show, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. So, For Honor um, announced a limited time event called Shadows of the Hitokiri which is happening soon or now or whenever. I don't know. Check that out if you're a fan of For Honor. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This is interesting. A new creator mode is coming to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, if I can say it, will allow players to create and share their own content, which looks awesome. For those of you who are interested in um, kind of armchair game design, you could say, there's this tool that they're giving you that you can create your own missions and you can put characters in places and give their own dialogue trees and stuff. So you can make you can make you can make a really in-depth kind of RPG type of thing. So I see so I can gather from what I can see. And um, yeah, that looks pretty awesome. It's a way of keeping the game alive. They did it with Far Cry 5, user generated content in the arcade mode where people could just come back and just keep Play in user generated content, which is gr a great way to keep keep the game alive in a single player game after you've launched it. So well done to uh, Ubisoft on yeah. that one because I, I do like the idea of that. I think it's really cool for uh, an assassin's game as well because then you can essentially create your own contracts and oh, I want to yeah. kill this guy, I'm going to stick him over there, and I've got to go through all this stuff to get there. And you can just create your own encounters. I think yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, it, it is cool. It's a, it's a great it's a great tool. That's for sure. Next up, another Tom Clancy game, Rainbow Six Quarantine. Now, this isn't a this isn't a uh, sequel to Rainbow Six Siege. This is a new three-player PVE game that launches next year. So, um, if it weren't enough Tom Clancy games or Rainbow Six games, we've got an, an, another one. So, uh, yeah, there you is, go. is this the weird sort of zombie type one? It's uh, like a standalone thing, isn't it? It's not yes, it's connected to Siege one. or anything. It's its own sort of pretend campaign thing it's weird that a, a Tom Clancy's game is doing something strangely supernatural and a bit spooky but I mean it's new I suppose <laughs> so it is new 
uh, although it's Tom Clancy, uh, although it's Rainbow Six. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many Rainbow Six players are really going to be there for this one because it, it's not... It's definitely nothing like Rainbow Six Yeah, Siege. it's not what Rainbow Six has kind of branded itself it's as. Siege. I think, but, but things can change. It's a new game. Yeah. I mean, we're on to new games. And then we heard about the content update coming to The Division 2 with two new locations. You can in, uh, visit the Pentagon and New York. And they are having a free-to-play period between today and June the 16th. That's June the 13th to June the 16th. You're probably watching this. If you do, it's probably too late if you're watching this on on YouTube. It's probably already too late. And you would have known about it earlier had you've got early access to this podcast over on Patreon. So patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. There's, there's, it's worth the, the, the $1 entrance fee to listen to this podcast early just for this kind of information, guys. Come on. What's with you? You can relate to everything because you're not subscribed. But yeah, that that's the thing that happens. <laughs> and then <laughs> next up, Roller Champions. It's a team-based PvP game, which was, show, which was shown off with the trailer. Apparently, uh, hands people who've had hands on with this, I've got some pretty positive. Yeah, I think impressions. it looks quite I think fun. It's a free, is it free to play? It looks like it's uh, trying to hop on the the, the 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 Rocket League kind of crowd. Mm. I think it just looks like like it's quite fun. I might I might uh, give it a crack. Yes, roller champions. Roller I'm, champ- I'm sure that there was definitely um, like a beta access for. I'm not entirely sure how the game itself works in terms of the sport of like scoring points or whatever. But you're on like a a circular. It's very rocky. Like, yeah, it? like a velodrome type thing, and you can go up the walls and you're throwing balls to your to your partners. But I don't know how you how you score points or anything like that. But it does look quite fun. It's Rocket League versus Roller Champion. Roller League. Roller, yeah, Roller Roller League is what it is. Yeah. Uh, and then we heard we saw another new game called Gods and Monsters. Now, this is a bright, colourful game from the creators of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It will release in February 2020. It looked interesting. Yeah, it looks like a, a kind of a big cross between Assassin's Creed and Breath of the Wild because of its more colourful, you know, artistic aesthetic. Yeah. So that's one to check out if you and if you guys are interested. And then the last thing... Oh, my God, did I just change... Did I just... Uh, what have yeah. you done? I, I just closed my my info page. Anyway, <clears throat> the last thing from the Ubisoft was the Uplay Plus subscription service, which was leaked beforehand. This will grant players access to a library of games, including the new releases like Ghost Recon Breakpoint, launched in September and will cost £15 a month. That sounds a bit steep. £15, <laughs> but though there's loads of old games you can play. On, it sounds very steep to me. Yeah, fifteen quid when you can get like you get Microsoft's one, which is cheaper, and you get like way $10. more. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a bit. It's classic Ubisoft though. It's yeah. a proper little cash grab thing. Uh, but they did announce that this is coming on top of Google Stadia. Now Google Stadia is just a service. We've learned that right. You don't get games with it, but you can subscribe to it just to get this access to this. The only game that you get will be Destiny 2. Well, that will be like free on Google Stadia. That's the only one that's now so far. But the li- library games are just Google Stadia. You've got to purchase yourself as well as the subscription, which sounds crazy to me. Who who do I, I don't know? Yeah. Give us some more new free games. But you know, if you if you're that way inclined, you can pay the ten dollars for Google Stadia and then the fifteen dollars for these Ubisoft games, and then you'll be able to stream all the Ubisoft games for a total price of twenty five dollars whenever and wherever you like on any device and any screen. Does that sound like value for me to you? It's Ubisoft, though. I just I don't care enough about all their games. But then they do punch out a lot because they've got several releases each year because can, they've got so you many. You can guarantee you'll have a Just Dance. I mean, twenty twenty one. Every single time. If you want to be a one dancing just dance. on the train to Just Dance twenty twenty. And then there's a weird. The, the other thing from this Ubisoft conference was the weird um, TV show, right? called Mythic Quest is coming to Apple TV starring one of the dudes from um, what where's he from What's oh the he's uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia guy. Always Sunny d- dude one of them um, so the, Ubisoft partnered to make this TV show essentially um, which is a bit weird so Mythic, Mythic Quest and then the game that this dude's producing in the TV show 
bit weird and out there, but it's Ubisoft for you. That's what they do, right? So is the TV show about a game developer? Yes, essentially. Okay. An egotistical game developer played uh, by Rob McElhenney. Does uh, does art reflect life? <laughs> Or does it not? <laughs> so that was the Ubisoft conference. Not much in it for me. I mean, Watch Dogs Legion looked impressive. Of all the gameplay gameplays that we saw throughout all of E3, I think Watch Dogs took it for me in terms of gameplay. Yeah, it was certainly the most extensive. It was yeah. a solid, like, 15-minute thing. Mm. And they so. showed off different things. So Yeah, yeah so there you go. You play. You, sorry, Ubisoft. Next, we've got two left. Square Enix first um, mm-hmm. that got so many people excited <laughs> lots of um, uh, big weeb titties hardened <laughs> Final Fantasy 7 remake uh, we got an an- announced the launch date of the 3rd of March 2020 Some a few information a few bits of information came out Tifa was finally revealed woo yeah I mean um, so that's the thing. It's going to be broken into two games, though. So th- apparently they're each going to be the size of a full game. But the, but the remaster in this game, uh, like Square Enix, uh, remaster in this game, but breaking it into two, and they're both well, going to be may- the size maybe even a- more than two. That's the thing because it's episodic, and they they just they don't know how big it's going to be. I'm not into it. Just give me a fucking game. All right, yeah. it's going to be two Blu-ray discs or whatever. It's going to be huge. I mean, I have as honest how much time in a day. There's yeah. only some, I, I, I'm not I'm not overly thrilled about Final Fantasy 7 you can probably tell <laughs> but okay I did watch some of the gameplay it looked interesting it's, yeah, it's kind of I a like hybrid the- battle system where it's like real time combat and then you can pause and do like the tactics based thing as well at the same time which is interesting it's a new take on it I don't I get bored of the classic RPG JRPG type trope where there's like th- you've got three characters and it's a turn based thing that's pretty boring to me now I could, I'd probably take a look at this Yeah. Um, the Final Fantasy 7 and remake it it'll be something that I might look at might not buy it but I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely keep an eye out I quite fancy the way the gameplay looks it looks cool and I'm not massively into Japanese games but I like the way the Final Fantasy games have their, have a very unique like style I don't really play any of them to be honest yeah. but I like the way they look because they're not too Japanese they're not too over the top for me and yeah. I, this does look really cool but well, I've, I don't know like what are you no one you don't even know what you are because you don't know how big you're going to be it's going to go on mm. forever yeah I mean Square Enix it's all about overly dramatic orchestral orchestral music orchestral music and um, it, a lot characters of characters turning going <laughs> yeah a lot of over it's just a lot of drama anything. right it's 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 a story you know every jrpg ever existed is a story about you saving the world versus the big bad demon that's coming like yeah they're very smash, large smash grandiose world. stories yeah which I, like, I do i enjoy a good big story i prefer the personal stories myself i, I like a mix yeah. i'm not gonna just live in crazy fancy worlds all the yeah. time but uh, yeah. every now and then a fancy bit of over the top so Life in Strange 2 got some new info I don't have it in front of me but you can probably find that out for yourself um, in probably a new chapter or something episode 4 August the 22nd this year episode 5 3rd of December this year if you hadn't known that already um, so next up Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles remastered is coming to PS4 in winter another remastered game Octopath Travel Octopath Traveler is coming to the PC in a port on June the 10th. So, another port. Last Remnant Remastered is coming June the 10th uh, this year. Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a sequel to the original and will support multiplayer. Ability to fly and swim underwater. And your armor or neither your armor or your weapons will wear out after repeated use which is always a good thing if only they could implement that in Breath of the Wild I could probably play it again um, but at least it's a new game Dragon Quest 11 definitive version coming to Switch this year so again another kind of remaster thing Circuit Superstars I don't have any information about but oh God knows what that is a racing video game developed by Vancouver based studio Original Fire so there you go Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC is the first DLC coming to the game so some DLC to get excited for there if the game wasn't big enough already um, heavy focus on Battalion 44 which was um, a classic style first person shooter um, 
which we kind of featured on the channel in the past, but kind of fallen off. He uh, went into early access and then kind of lost excitement for it. And it's like, yeah, okay, give us a full game, please. Anyway, Final Fantasy fourteen We've got a lengthy trailer for the third expansion, which is titled Shadowbringers and comes July the 2nd. Another expansion to an already live game there. Um, another tr- gameplay trailer for Dying Light 2, which we've already talked about. Yeah, yeah. Um, Romancing Saga 3 remaster. We got a, a Scarlet a Sa- Saga Scarlet Grace port, which is part of that announcement too. Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, which is a mobile spin off, because we all love mobile spin offs from War of Visions Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. So there you go Outriders which is one of your picks this is from the Bulletstorm developers coming in 2020 why are you excited about this Henry because it's from the Bulletstorm developers right to be honest uh, this was one that was their Twitter account account became active and people got a bit excited like ooh it's a new thing brand new game which I'm into it's gonna be a like a sci-fi shooter it seems to have some like cooperative vibe to it because there's like three characters in the in the cgi trail again no gameplay um killing monsters and stuff but it's by um people can fly who did bullet storm and uh gears judgment and it's not like a mainline gears entry but it had some cool ideas in it but they've, they've both both games have awesome shooting and i think bullet storm is easily one of the most underrated first person shooters because that's all about being creative and killing people in crazy ways so that's the main reason i'm i'm into this it's because Bulletstorm was really bloody fun and I want more of it so there you go mark your calendars coming well you can't really because it's coming <laughs> next year mark your whole year next year it's coming at some point next up was Oninaki it's a classic style RPG coming to August the 22nd this year so uh, that looks interesting if you are a JRPG fan Final Fantasy 8 Remastered is coming to PS4 this year woo another Final Fantasy Remastered or port or re- another version like I, I mean if you're a Final awesome. Fantasy fan you're, you're covered so many Final Fan- Fantasy stuff things here um, but there you go and the very last one was something we all anticipated Marvel's Avengers and you're super excited aren't you Henry finally they've shown some thing still not gameplay really there were some bits in the trailer that at least pretended to be gameplay but we don't know for sure well we, when the Iron Man was flying down there yeah like and then the Hulk maybe ran, ran and jumped on the thing might be gameplay might not I don't mm. entirely trust it yeah this trailer I'm very mixed on because I'm like, oh, it's Avengers, superheroes, awesome. I really like the character designs, particularly uh, Thor and Captain America because mm-hmm. they look, you know, quite distinct and they look their own way. Some people have been complaining that they don't look like the um, the current ones in the movies. So Iron Man doesn't look like they don't sound like him either. So, <laughs> who really gives a shit? Like, do you actually care? The movies have only been around for the past ten years. The comics have been around for like over half a century. Mm-hmm. Like, what? The, like, chill, chill out. But I, it's probably because a lot of people didn't know about these characters before the movie versions. But I, and I did, and I've known obviously different people yeah. playing them in games and cartoons and other movies and whatnot. I think they look great. It's by Crystal Dynamics, who are the team behind Tomb Raider, the Tomb Raider remakes, sorry. And I've played the first two, which is uh, Tomb Raider and then Rise of the Tomb Raider. I've not played yeah. Shadow, but those two good. They're good, solid games. That They live a lot in Uncharted Shadow, which yeah. is ironic because Uncharted was heavily inspired by the original Tomb Raiders, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's made by Crystal, Dynam- Crystal Dynamics in cooperation with Idos Montreal so there's two studios working on it and then yep. there's I think there's a couple of others who are much smaller I think there's a, a newly formed one working for yeah. like de- dedicated for this game who they did uh, Deus Ex and the Deus Ex what was the the first one Hu- Human Revolution I think yeah. that's that's the good one Mankind Divided and then Mankind yeah. Divided is the second one where they snipped off the ending and messed it up and I still haven't played it because mm. of that reason I really enjoyed uh, Human Revolution though. that was really good it's meant to be out in May next year May 15th 2020 which is my sister's birthday so awesome if you wanted to know that there you go Um, got Iron Man voiced by Nola North excellent like I saw he tweeted and I hadn't even seen the trailer at that point and he just put I am Iron Man I was just like oh yes Uh, Troy Baker voicing the Hulk which I think is a really great choice because Bruce Banner 
in particular is such an interesting character that not many people really give the time it's yeah. always the hulk the hulk's yeah. the more interesting one but the voice actor as talented as troy baker he's i'm, I'm really excited for what he does with the yeah. character yeah i've already seen like part of the cuts a uh, part of the tr- cut scene in the trailer where iron man and hulk or the, uh, bruce banner are talking with one another and you can see that 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 relationship that no one nothing true but they've got together they're good friends aren't they and yeah they've, yeah. Got, the, they've got their youtube channels YouTube together, channel. so. yeah it's 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 really good to see them working together again that's for sure yeah uh captain america voiced by someone called jeff shine the, these the next three i don't really i don't know a lot of black widow is voiced by laura bailey and i know she's done several games like you you probably recognize her voice from something mm-hmm. but i i don't know anything about her really uh, and then thor is travis willingham i really like thor's design there's something about it because it's got a real viking edge to it which i think the current movie one doesn't so much it's a bit more sci-fi yeah gotcha my big problem with it is that there's it seems v- that they're leaning on a lot of games as a service elements right like they've promised free dlc in terms of like regions and new characters coming in available to everyone which is awesome but the way they've described it in a few interviews from people at the um at e3 like behind the scenes or whatever it does seem like they're like well we want you to be playing this game forever and we're going to keep supporting it over time and we're going but then people are okay how are you going to do that oh we can't tell you that right now They've been very yeah, tight-lipped on a lot of stuff it. and mm. uh, kind of dodging questions. But they've said no no loot boxes or pay-to-win stuff, which is always nice. It's a shame that people have to say it now, but you do have to say it, yeah. just to be clear. I mean, that's a selling point now, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's and unless a, you're a Randy Pitchford and then uh, you just make things up. You just pretend. You yeah. just lie. Make believe. Uh, but they'll probably monetize it with, like, uh, cosmetics and stuff. You'll get different yeah. skins for your characters. So I'd rather it wasn't there, but I'm not going to throw my toys out of the pram if it is. To be, like, It's just something you've got to accept in yeah. this day and age. Um, when we see more of the game, which they are promising will become like s- soon, because they've got loads to show. They're just trying to show like well, a little bit at a time. Yeah. Then we'll learn some more. Four-player co-op online, which sounds a bit too close to Anthem for my liking right now. But again, once, it, once we see it, a bit more of actual gameplay and how it's going to work, it'll mm-hmm. be fine. Well, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not fine. We'll see. The plot seems to be that the Avengers are like sprung into action on a day, which is Avengers Day. It's a big oh, celebration of them doing well, superhero, saving the world, whatever. Pat, <laughs> patting themselves on the back. Yeah. A-day. We, we've done a real great job. And then bad things happen. Goes Everything goes wrong. They get blamed for it. Oh. It seems to suggest that Captain America dies. And it's so they, they disband. The, the Avengers mm. are gone. Superheroes are outlawed. But then... They have to come back to fight a new threat Sell or something. the score. It's something we've seen a hundred times. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's superheroes and stuff. What, it's superheroes and stuff, it's right? Superheroes and stuff. You right. want the good guys beating up the bad guys, and that's, that's all you need. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, n- it's not for me. It's not for me, this. It really isn't for me. I'm not really interested. It's so... It, it's like... A, it looked like... If someone wanted to play the movie, this is what yeah would appeal to them, yeah. right? If you want to be part of that movie, this is your option, right? You get to you get to be in that movie. You get all these yeah. big fancy action scenes. You get all these big set pieces. You got yeah, you can be Thor. You can be um, Hulk and that. Yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the movies, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely be passing on this one. But. That's fair. But there you go. The best bit of the trailer is when Hulk picks up a tank and, and just boots the guy out from under it. That, that really did make me so that, that rounds up the Square Enix conference. Not a lot there for me. In fact, there was nothing there for me, <laughs> um, really. Apart from Dying Light 2, they showed us some nice... some nice, um, And maybe Final Fantasy VII, we'll see. Um, and then we had some Marvel's Avengers for, for Henry here and Outriders. There we go. Outriders, I'll, t- I'll take a look at it as well. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Next up, and the last E3 conference was Nintendo, if you can call it a conference. It's just a pre recorded affair as usual. Yeah, it was just a, a direct, wasn't it? Really? But holy hell, did they get everybody excited. And um, again, it's like Square Enix that they're bringing ports and they're bringing remakes and remasters and all sorts to it um if that's your your bag then you got you then you plan it to be excited about here first up super smash bros ultimate two new characters revealed 
Dragon Quest Hero and Banjo Kazooie, right? People are really excited about Banjo Kazooie. There's there's the video of everyone going completely berserk about it. I don't care about Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't East, care. East the road, man. East the road. I, I love Smash. I Whooping think it's and More hollering character. and screaming I mean, and I jumping like, and waving their arms and shouting and screaming. I like that you're that happy. I wish I could be that happy. I, I wish but, games would make me that yeah, happy. Yeah, I, I, I je- <laughs> like some people say it's sad, and to be honest, it, it is a little bit. But I, I'm mm. a little bit jealous because I wish I could get that happy about yeah. anything. There we go. The Dragon Quest. I, I don't know anything about Dragon Quest, but they they're more my speed in terms of characters in Smash I like people with swords to just beat crap out of people yeah so next up moving on Dragon Quest 11 definitive edition release date which is September the 27th was announced and then we got some Luigi's Mansion 3 gameplay for the Nintendo Switch again that looks looks quite fun but it's, it's fun and colourful yeah, yeah it's quite a you know it's a Nintendo family friendly family friendly game thing. but it looks quite fun the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics whatever that is it's no a idea very long title yeah uh, not sure and then we got The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening which is pretty cool I've just messed up my notes here because I've got some notes down here um, so this is the remake of the um, original Link's Awakening and also a Dungeon Maker mode was announced for it too so um, user generated content is always a good thing in my book um, re- the release date for it was revealed and that release date is Henry September, September the, the 20th. 20th I think we both clicked on that. I've got the trailer up right now <laughs> literally just as that happened now having played the original this is one that's definitely on my um, to playlist I will be buying this I will be playing it and I, I will be reliving some old memories so that's one that I will be playing Trials of Mana um, was talked about I have no info on that Collection of Mana is another game in, <laughs> with collection but that is out right now you can play it on Switch right now so that was something right and and yeah. then and then let's talk about Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Hunt on Switch. We've made a video about this already, so we've talked about it extensively. If you want to go and check out our discussion, it was Wednesday's video this week. Go and check that out, but we're both anticipating this, right? Yeah, one of the best games of the generation, possibly of all time. Bringing it onto a new platform that you can play on the go sounds amazing if, they can, if they can manage it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <clears throat> Fire Emblem Three Houses got a story trailer. Resident Evil 5 and 6 are both coming to Switch this fall. So a, a port of... Resident Evil yeah because recently they just added uh, 1 0 and 4 to the Switch but not 2 and 3 I don't think mm. so Damn. they've almost got the whole lot No More Heroes 2 was an- 3 was announced sorry Contra Rogue Corpse was announced the Contra Collection was also released out now on the Switch Demon X Machina is being released on September the 13th was featured Panzer Dragoon was a remake has been announced for that, so another remake. Pokemon Sword and Shield will work with Pokeball Plus. Yay! Oh, that's and that the, was the little gizmo from Pokemon Let's Go, right? Yeah. It's the Joy-Con that looks like a Pokeball yeah. that you can actually throw. Woo! <laughs> so we've got a gameplay video for Astral Chain. Empire of Sin was featured, and I've got no details about I it I quite like the look of uh, Astral Chain and Empire of Sin. Astral Chain mainly because it's a platinum game, so it's going to have yeah. crazy over-the-top combat, which looks fun. But Empire of Sin is meant to be an XCOM-like thing, and it's a super noir, 1920s dark kind of crime thing. It looks quite interesting. Interesting indeed, so check it out if you're interested in that. Uh, next up, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order, got a new trailer. Yeah, they've added some new characters in it, and they've revealed the expansion pass, I think, which is their like season pass thing, promising a bunch of new characters uh, from the X-Men, uh, the Fantastic Four, presumably just the four, yeah. and I think the Marvel Knights, and I'm not familiar with who that team is, but it's more characters... Uh, I, I, I liked Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, but this new one looks particularly chaotic and, like, there's just too much input on the screen. The others are... It's four characters and you're beating stuff up. There's lots of superhero powers and shenanigans happening. But this one seems really chaotic, and I don't know if I'm into it. But... There you know. go. Cadence of Hyrule 
uh, was announced. Re- that is releasing today, June the thirteenth, and that's available on the Switch now. I like it. I like it when they're like, and this is available right, right now. now. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I love that. Is that that's the uh, crossover one, isn't it? With um, something else. Yeah, Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necromancer, Feet, The Legend of Zelda. So it's a crossover with um, what was this? Is it the Shovel Knight uh, people? No, no, it's just Crypt, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. That's it. Crypt the Necro Necro Dancer. Yes. Um, so, after that, Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games trailer was shown. I saw I mean, some saw some surfing. If yeah. You, if you want to get gnarly, bro. With Mario's nipples on show again. Oh bloody hell! There'll be controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Spyro Reignited Trilogy is coming to the Switch. So that that's a thing. Alien Isolation is coming to the mm. Switch. So Which that's the is, thing. Uh, it's pretty cool. I love Alien Isolation. I'm not sure it's the kind of game I want to play in public, so I don't want to be uh, yeah. getting scared silly. In your bed at night with your train. You could do that. And you well, I could play it like in the middle of the night next to my girlfriend while she's soundly asleep, and I'll just be there shaking. Yeah. <laughs> um, Animal Crossing New Horizons was announced as the name of the new Animal Crossing game. So we didn't have a name but it's New Horizons. Uh, it was announced, however, that it was delayed until March the 20th, and they said the reason for this is that they have a very employee-friendly company on Nintendo, and they are going to avoid crunch by doing this, and I think it's admirable yeah. that they come out and say, right, we're delaying this game because we don't want to put our workers under yeah. pre- pressure and... and and even if it's not true, it's a great PR move because that's what the conversation's about right now is, is workplace crunch. So it's a, it's a clever move. Yes. So everyone's really excited about getting a release date for Animal Crossing, apart from us, maybe. I've re- <laughs> Again, I, I, I don't care about yeah. Animal Crossing. Well, if you missed it, you missed it. Yeah, a lot of people are into it, and that's cool, but it's just not for me. And then one of the other things to to make the weebs cheers all of themselves, <laughs> I think. Legends, of Zelda, Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Maybe two <laughs> two um so this is a sequel to breath of the wild it's not a new legend of zelda at all yeah it's not a new version of the characters because this that's one thing i do think is cool about the zelda series is they're uh an- anthological is that the word where they're, they're all different yeah but then they still can do sequels within them which i think is cool there you go um so what, so uh, what what this is this is barely an announcement because it was just a little trailer. We don't even have a name or anything. That's it. But I much prefer it to even the Elder Scrolls Six one, which I've said before. I thought was crap because all it was was a landscape and then the Elder Scrolls Six. No title, no no anything. Nothing. But, but at least in this, you have recognizable stuff. So that that's Link, that's Zelda. Oh, there's a spooky looking dead person there, and then yeah. some weird black goo. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to get excited about in this Nintendo one if you're a Nintendo fan. Same as Square Enix, I feel. And um, yeah, they know what their market is, and they're and they're they're playing to it. Like that. Yeah, so a couple, of, I, th- I would say, a couple of strong showings there from both companies. Nintendo was stronger than a lot. People are saying that Nintendo's is the best, the highlight of E3 for them, just for sheer volume of games there. Yeah, and, sure. And most of them had gameplay. And I f- I feel like it's however many games appeal to you the most you will that that will be your winner of e3 yeah right i mean it's a it's a it's so subjective that it's not no no point even like arguing about it but um for me obviously the microsoft one was more notable because of the sheer amount of information about the games that i'm interested in um so it'll be the same for other people if you've got five or six games that appeal to you in the nintendo one oh nintendo one e3 it's it's yeah. whatever it is, whatever. Nobody wins E3, really. It's just people making clickbait. We base. win, because we get to see new games. <laughs> exactly. There we go. So that is our complete roundup in detail to the to the absolute maximum of what happened at E3 this year. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and um, we hope we didn't, didn't miss too much out, because... Um, we try our best to throw this information together but if we did miss a couple of things we apologize for that <laughs> and uh, there you have it um, a couple of going back to last week our, our kind of speculation we didn't see a fable we no. didn't see a fable for so that was which I thought was a kind of a no brainer that yeah. we see a fable we didn't see a Sony state of play Sony weren't really there no I reckon they'll sneak one in before the end of the month yeah I reckon we didn't get to see Harry Potter. 
No, which that was a weird, shame. Which is weird because mm. that is like everyone knows it's a thing. Everyone mm. knows it. It's, Apparently, it's, it's real. a thing. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, we didn't. Obviously, we already heard that Rocksteady weren't showing at this year, and then we did get to see the George R. R. Martin from FromSoft game, and that was it, really. Um, no official proper new Xbox, which was a big surprise to me. Yeah. That they, they did the, the sort of trailer with some devs saying it's going to be the bee's knees, essentially yeah. it's going to be the greatest thing in the world. But no name, no official announcement, mm-hmm. none of that. And it's, I figured they would show it, in the absence of Sony so they can get ahead of the game and be like yes here we are yeah. we're doing it but they probably didn't because also because Sony weren't there because they're waiting for them to do the theirs as well if that makes sense if they're like yeah yeah we'll see, see what they're up against yeah, see their competition course, yeah. uh, there was no announcement for Xbox Live on Switch no, uh, no. so that was one thing that we kind of thought might happen um, and I think that just about does it um I'm trying to look here. We, we've skipped over the Upload VR conference and the Limited Run conference. If those of you are interested, there's more information about those, as well as the Kind of Funny Games one, which we didn't feature at all because this podcast has to has to end at some point. <laughs> um, so that is it. And that that's it for this week. So we're going to move on to the Discord questions next. And the Discord questions are put to us by our patron supporters, who choose to support us on a monthly basis over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming and for as little as one dollar a month you can get access to the discord you get early access to the to the podcast as well as some other rewards that you can uh, get to for being a patron supporting us bringing this content because without these guys who do support us we would we would not be able to do it so Huge thanks to everybody who does support us on Patreon. And let's read some of these Patreon questions. First yeah. up, do you want to take it away? All right. Well, I haven't read these beforehand, so apologi- I apologize if I stumble over myself. This is from Cloney. As a channel that knows the struggle of YouTube, struggling with income and monetization in the past, what are, you, what are your views on sponsored content on the news? I absolutely understand that you need the paycheck to keep doing what we all love you doing, but I also want to know your views on the whole dilemma between independent journalism and needing the goodwill of the gaming industry to keep the lights on. Um, Cloney's talking here about the video that we did with regard to Hearthstone. That was a sponsored video that we produced last week. Um, and I think you, you you have to be careful not to conflate news with uh, feature, right? So we do different types of content on this on this channel. A lot of it is news. A lot is like this is the daily news. Some of it is features, right? Some of it is this is what this game is. Let's talk about this game. Let's have a. So the video we did in Hearthstone was a feature video. It wasn't the news. It wasn't like this game is awesome. Blah blah blah. blah. It was th- they they paid us to tell you about the Hearthstone game. It just so happened that. Sorry, the Dalar and Heist, the the new single player content in Hearthstone. Um, They put as a pitch to us. I liked Hearthstone, and um, it just so happened that we played it and we enjoyed it, so we could talk enthusiastically about it. They weren't paying us for our opinions in that. They were paying us to deliver information about the Dalar and Heist, which is what we did. But we also infused it with some of our opinions about the game itself. This isn't any dilemma in terms of delivering news. This is us offering you information if you want it, right? In conjunction with a partner and. Uh, you can take it or leave it. It's not us telling you one thing and trying to deceive you and taking money for that. It's not like that at all. It's not. In, it's not um, a dilemma between independent journalism and needing and needing the goodwill of the game industry to keep the lights on. It's not like that. Um, we only ever choose these sponsorships um, once we thought about it carefully. So it's it's not. It's not what you, you know. People can jump to conclusions thinking that we're we're paid now. We're paid shills. It's it's not. They paid us to present a, their product to you, and that's what we did. It's just like any other sponsorship. You watch a pre-roll. That's literally us presenting the product to you, but with, without our words. It's like you watch our video, but you watch a, a sponsored content beforehand. We don't say that. Just like any other podcast, you think about the podcasts that you might watch, like the Joe Rogan show or whatever. He talks about products that he has no affiliation with at all, but he just delivers information. It's the same thing. Um, But anyway, it is an interesting conversation. People might not understand that. People might just jump to conclusions because they've seen it before where people are just like trying to sell something um, as their own 
words, but they're getting paid to say it. It's like, no, it's, not, least, it's not what we did. At least it's not, uh, what was the recent drama with the makeup people? Vitamins. At least it's not vitamins, eh? Then we'll get in in makeup drama. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, to be fair, that would get some serious clicks. Yeah, we'll get some more views. We wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't need sponsorships at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we do we do have to keep the lights on. I mean, it's there's no two ways about it. We we don't have an endless money uh, bu- bucket of money, and um, without these sponsorships and without the support on Patreon, um, we we would we would not operate. It's that simple. Like we literally have to pay the bills. Um, I won't go into detail as to how many how many bills that paid, um, but it's. It, it helps that's the only way to the only way to do it and yeah we have struggled in the past and we're, we're just trying our best to stay alive now anyway let's move on all the serious stuff out the window super flea people like our, you, ourselves look more into games than just how much they make to determine if it's a good game or not when you consider games like division one aliens colonial marines anthem or even films do you think sellout reviewers and media are fogging up the difference between sales due to a quality finished product and sales due to hype or misrepresentation what do we think this question means so well so do we reckon that like sellout reviews that are just people like like people pay to say it's good and people say oh it's earned this much money is is the money do people believe that money is the representation of a good product i suppose i i think most people not well maybe not even most people but a lot of people a lot of people do consider reviews more less so for games i think and i think i don't know why because i feel like it would make more sense because the game is more expensive and it takes more time. A film will be there for two hours. Yeah. But um, I do think it's an interesting one. I don't think sellout reviews are, fog- are fogging things up or anything like that. Aren't uh, personally. Mm. I'm, 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 my brain's mush at the moment. I'm failing to wrap my head around this question. So <laughs> unfortunately, I can't really give you an informed answer. Do I think sellout reviewers and media are fogging up the difference? between sales due to a quality finished product and sales due to a hype or misrepresentation. Um, I, I don't know. I can't wrap my head around that right now. Those so, so a game that is really well advertised, like, like say Anthem. Anthem was really well advertised with a strong marketing campaign, but it was rubbish, unfinished, all that. Are reviewers conflating the success of that with games that are finished but didn't have the hype level I think well maybe if you if we clarify this question for next week maybe you can answer it but unfortunately I don't have a good answer for you here super fleet I do think you've got have you got another yeah you've got another question later on so uh, apologies for that one we'll try our best for the next question (laughs) Uh, (laughs) trying to wake our brains up a little bit ask the next one this is from Vienticus Prime So, I'm an old gamer, in case you couldn't tell. When it comes to difficulty in games, I get torn because I enjoy a challenge, but at the same time, I've already done a lot of challenging gaming stuff in my youth. Uh, I tend to to stray away from harder difficulties, either because the challenge is stupid or tedious to me anymore, or just... Or I just want the, to experience the world, the style of play, and the story, and then go on to the next game. Do you ever feel this way? Also, do you do you ever try some of these extremely punishing uh, RNG-based difficulties? That no, difficulties in inverted commas, yeah. and wonder who the fuck would do this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the whole um, Soulsborne type game debate yeah. again. Is that like, do you have the patience? I don't have the patience. I, I need to feel rewarded for my time. Yeah. And if I feel like I'm putting time into something and I'm not getting any reward beyond spending two hours to figure out um, some bosses move, uh, you know, telegraph the way he telegraphs his moves, and so I'll just figure out how 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 to kill them. Spending two hours or something or something like that is not rewarding enough when I beat it to keep me fulfilled in playing the game. So I'm exactly like you, dude. I'm an older gamer, and I I just don't get it. I don't get yeah. the achievement. I don't get the satisfaction that other people do in them terms of games. When it comes to picking a difficulty at the beginning of the game, because as we said, I I don't like the Soulsborne genre really because it's just not for me. Um, but when I boot up a game and I have to pick a difficulty, I'll go for whatever one it's already on. Yeah. Because I feel like that's 
the way it's been optimized mm -hmm. and if it's too easy it's too easy if it's too hard it's too hard I'll, I'll i try to stick with it for as long as i can like i've been saying in god of war i still need to beat the valkyrie queen and you're like oh, i'll just drop difficulty but i'm like i'm i'm not doing that i'll, I'll, I'll pick my difficulty and i'm sticking with it yeah, fuck, i'm not fucked i'm not <laughs> fucked the the valkyrie the one battle ahead of us is valkyrie and god of war i was like it's killed me once already and i haven't the patience i'm gonna drop it too easy i killed it dropped it back up to hard afterwards and was like i'm not going anywhere yeah. near another valkyrie <laughs> but in terms of um yeah, do uh, what was my next point do you ever try some of these extremely punishing difficulties every now and then i went back yeah. and tried to do the last of us on uh what's what the super hard one it's called uh grounded or survivor one one of them is the other way around I tried it and you have no hud and it's super hard and i just kept dying because i had no idea how much health yeah. i had switched it one drop down which i didn't want to make it easier i just wanted to be able to know what my yeah. health is what bullets have i got left and it made it so much yeah. more pleasant but still challenging i want a challenge right and i will tweak a game's difficulty to get that challenge but not be punishing and that's the difference between the soulsborne game and normal game like a good example of how to do difficulty in a game is diablo 3. Hmm. now there's there's about 12 or 13 or 14 different difficulties on that and you can and you can <laughs> you can just inch them up as you go right but the the interesting thing is every single difficulty a little a little bit more difficult you get better loot and better reward yeah. and better a better satisfaction for it so not only not only are you playing on a hard difficulty and you know you know in your heart hearts that you know you you're doing something that you shouldn't be able to because it's hard you also get rewarded for yeah. that at the same time i think that's a real great way to do it i do think one of my personal favorite achievements of mine in like difficulty based gaming is going back and doing Gears, Gears of War 2 on Insane because uh, I did it the whole thing co-op in an all-nighter with one of my uh, old friends we've been friends since, uh, since primary school for years and years pulled an all-nighter and that got very unpleasant at times because it was so hard and we were both super tired and we were both getting very ratty at each other me probably more so but eventually we did it and it was, it was proper like I can, I can I can rest. <laughs> I can now finally sleep. It is over, but it, it was good. Okay, Metal Shark. We're going to have to pick one of these. I think um, you provided five questions, as usual do. Thank you very much. I think which title showcased... And I, did I read the last one? N no. Which title showcased or announced from E3 do you think will sell for the highest monetary amount? Gold, deluxe, collection edition, etc. And... If different, which title do you think deserves to? Um, let's pick that one because it's E3 yeah, related. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I'll have to refresh myself what's been announced. Was there a new FIFA announced? Because that will probably make the most. There was a new FIFA announced. Because yeah. that, that, that wins then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not necessarily sell the most units. It probably still will. But it will make the most because of the ultimate team and microtransaction model because it fucking makes a lot of money. If we're yeah. going to ignore that sort of thing... And go for like a uh, a more like a good game, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a triple A like a single player game for the likes of uh, Cyberpunk or Outer Worlds or whatever. I think Cyberpunk's going to sell like hotcakes. I that's, think that collector's go... edition because there's only two versions out. Like that collector's yeah. edition is going to be fly off the shelves. It's, I mean, it, what they're like two hundred and fifty bucks, I think. Mm. So, and there are, I I think that's too. I would never consider paying that much, but a yeah. lot of people are like, yeah, I'll go for it, I'll and, take and, it. and have done. Yeah. Seen it in the comments and. You know, you look at likes of Ubisoft and Watch Dogs Legion. There's like five different <laughs> versions of that. I think there's a lot of bad blood yeah. around uh, Watch Dogs from mistakes yeah. they've made in the past. So yeah. a lot of people are a bit more hesitant. Yeah, and and, they, and they're selling things like uh, remember it was Aiden's iconic hat from the original Watch Dogs. It was one of the memes, right? And now there's an I, there's something that they've called described as iconic again in this Watch Dogs yeah. Legion. I'm like, you don't even learn you, your lesson. You don't decide if it's iconic. Yeah, the industry decides if it, it's iconic. And it, and it's just like the basic version is just the game in a box, and that's it. It's the basic. It's the it's the shit version. But everything above that is is like so yeah. uh, over so it's like trying to website you the whole time. Fuck off, Ubisoft. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. This is Super Flea's other question, which we can hopefully answer this time. Uh, okay, where are we? Yep, here we go. Uh, at Gaz, at Henry, did any e any of E3 change your feelings towards any coming titles? And out of the showcase, what's your most anticipated title? 
so we, well, well, that's a good question. We kind of covered a lot of that. Yeah, my we? most anticipated, uh, which hasn't changed, it was going in and is the same coming out, is Cyberpunk. Of course. Uh, very, very much so. Best for both. What? Uh, did he really change my feeling? Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, it didn't get worse or better, but it mm. did. I felt. I didn't feel as I would have as I expected to when I watched it. I don't. I don't quite know what it was. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there wasn't enough gameplay to deter me on any game because there wasn't enough gameplay full stop for any game. So it didn't really change my feelings. Um, I guess it's great to see gameplay from Jedi Fallen Order because you never know what it's going to be because it's EA you never know right And the, but the more I learn about it the more I'm impressed by it so in terms of changing my feelings change from being neutral and not bothered to being positive that's mm. that's one way that my feelings have changed for sure I think my feelings have changed on Watch Dogs because I didn't care and now I do yeah like, sure I was so ambivalent like ah oh, the first one was shit example. the second one was meant to be alright but I still didn't play it the third one I'm, I'm, I am yeah. interested in I, I am surprised by how interested in that game I am having yeah. played the second one and not being impressed in the slightest by yeah. Watch Dogs 2 um, so yeah there you go there's a uh, there's a lot to a lot to talk about there yeah right Tons is the next questioner E3 now wrapped up. What games have you guys been hoping to get more info on that weren't shown? For instance, I've, I've been hoping to get Fable 4 or new Shin Megami Tensei game. Um, games that weren't shown, obviously Starfield, obviously yeah. Fable 4. Yeah. Um, and what was the uh, other one that weren't shown? That uh, we whatever it is Rocksteady's doing, because there's been so many leaks. And the Harry Potter and one. The Harry yeah. Potter we've one. Already yeah, gone we've kind of danced on that. I would have liked more from... Halo and Gears of War because the franchises I love, but I want I want to be pulled back in. I want that reason to yeah to get a discounted Xbox One just for those two two games. Sure, that's it. So Rudy Man, so you read yeah, yeah, this I'll, one. There's two questions left. I'm getting the long ones. Uh, Rudy Manchego. There's two questions there. Something struck me with additional E3 presses. So yeah, something struck me with additional E3 presses. Traditional. <laughs> Right. See, I'm messing this right up. And that was the number of games as a service updates that are and there are and how utterly mind-numbingly boring they are. Do you think that the focus on games as a service for so many publishers, including the drop in new IPs or titles announced, are a, are a bit of a death a death knell for presses like E3? Is it hard to get excited for new characters or maps or whatever for existing games? So much of the big publishers were just games as a service updates yeah exactly spot on there dude yes exactly there's so many games that I'm not bothered for that if you're not bothered in the first place why would you get excited about DLC yeah. and expansions and all that sort of nonsense like Destiny Elder Scrolls Online to name a couple it's the, it's that that type of thing where it's like oh look at this awesome you can't jump bore me for 10 minutes with this bullshit yeah I mean is it a bit of a death knell I mean it takes a shine off that's for sure it takes a shine off show us new games that's what I'm interested in. That's one of the main things. I when a uh, breakpoint was on on the show, I was like, "I've ju you've just shown me a trailer for this like <sighs> a week before. I don't care." And I was like, "Oh, John Burnfall's dog. Oh, these <laughs> skis, great." That's a good but one. get the game out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Give me something better. And the second part of the question. Okay. Uh, also, does Todd Harrod have the <laughs> have cajones? Cajones. I love the word cojones. Cajones. Uh, have cojones of steel. Bethesda made an announcement of day one content for Fallout 76 month, months after release. The cojones on that guy. Um, Dang. To clarify, it's the N NPCs that should have been day one. Yeah. He announced it today. Hey, it's coming. I mean, yeah, Todd Howard. I mean... He appears like he's self-reflective, like, and he understands how how the internet reacts. And he and he was like, "Yeah, we had some troubles with that game. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised some of you um, even made it and, and didn't. I was surprised a lot of you showed up or whatever joke he made on, on stage. Because he, he understands the backlash and and he and he's addressed it kind of in his own funny little way. Um, but yeah, absolutely right. I mean. Fallout 76 will probably end up being a really decent game um, only because of the backlash more than anything just like a lot of um, games do like um, No Man's Sky Sea of Thieves is probably a good game now I've not gone back to it yet I've got it installed because um, I've I got the 
the Xbox Game Pass now. But yeah, um, to try and sell sell that game now with what should have been in the game to begin with on stage at E3 this year, yeah, you got some cajones, that's cajones. for sure. Cajones. Cajones. Such a great word. Okay, and the very last question. Alec, WH22, Microsoft has stated that its next generation Xbox will have hardware acceleration for ray tracing, while Mark Cerny only claimed the PS5 was capable of ray tracing. What? That, uh, was Mark Cerny only claimed the PS5 was capable of ray tracing? Okay. If this is true, it would be a sizable upper hand for the Xbox as rendering moves in that direction and becomes less independent on the fake it till you make it approaches we see in the current rasterization oh, scintillating word there dude do you think sony is targeting do you think sony is targeting the here and now at a lower price point and would use the mid-generation refresh concept to address hardware accelerated ray tracing as they did with the ps4 pro addressing 4k tv's popularity I wouldn't be surprised, dude. I wouldn't be surprised if they sell us a product now so they can update it in a few years' yeah. time when they've got... Because you think about it, right? How long is this hardware going to supposed to last for? Like a constant generation, six to eight years, let's say. They, they, they've got to plan it and, and put the technology together now, maybe two years before they release. So by the time, like four years into the console cycle, this is six years old technology. Yeah. You think about it, right? So keeping up to date with all these like ray traces and all these buzzwords that they think is going to sell consoles it's going to be difficult for them and the, the way that they're upscaling these 4k it's not true 4k uh as much of the chinese seller artists as i for 4k it can achieve 4k yeah can it fuck you're just trying to using that as um a selling point which is because it's upscaled it's not really 4k but yeah i wouldn't be surprised it's just marketing it's just it's just trying to get people to buy things all these buzzwords are 4k was one and now like 120 one two 120 frames per second is a is one that's um they're jumping on now 120 frames per second 60 60 frames per second 120 frames per second 8k resolution and all this ssd four times as fast all this bullshit it doesn't matter right all it is is them trying to sell you the hardware and those are my thoughts on that i mean all this tech i i it flies straight over my head i know what ray tracing is and i can if i see it i'm like oh that's pretty that's slightly shinier for a three times crippling of the performance. Like, why, who yeah, would want exactly. that right now? Just give it me in 10 years' time when the hardware yeah. is capable. I don't care that much. I don't want my game to be that slow. Yep. Yep, that's exactly much, it. Much <laughs> is that, right? Okay, ray tracing, another buzzword that they'll try and sell you a con an, an updated console for. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely how they're going to do it. Alec, thanks for your question, dude, and thanks to everyone else for the questions this week on the podcast. We have now some YouTube comments to go through. We didn't do it last week, and someone comment commented that there was the favourite part of the podcast, and uh, they were gutted for it, oh, so we're, we're going to have to do it this week. triumphant return. Well, there we go. That, that might be... Uh, that's your first comment already, if you're reading a comment about the exactly. lack of comments. It's a comment about the lack of comments. Now then. I did see a really good one on um our watchdogs video but the guy deleted it straight away it might have made a comeback but i don't think it has and um, we've already spoken about this so we made a joke in the video about because the what watchdogs brexit. 3 is gonna yeah it's, it's set in a post brexit reality where obviously the world's gone a bit crazy there's the totalitarian regime and all that shit and the the dead sec are gonna bring down the bad guys and he so we and we compared brexit to the apocalypse and it was very obviously a joke. We were <laughs> laughing. It's kind of a giveaway. As we were joking, right? Yeah. And we triggered someone who, uh, who said, I wish I, I wish you hadn't deleted it so I could have it in front of me. It was something along the lines of, oh, how is uh, the people taking their independence back the same as an apocalypse? Comparing Brexit to the apocalypse uh, is such a joke. Unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. If you haven't got a sense of humor, man, you don't deserve to be subscribed. I wish there was an entrance fee, just a little bit of a little bit of uh, like intelligence. Yeah, in that, intellectual currency. Like a little test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A little test before you're allowed to subscribe. Like I, I don't want people to be able to have to pay to subscribe. I just want people to go through uh, intelligence tests because oh my god, you wouldn't have been subscribed in the first place, you idiot. Um <laughs> <laughs> don't even know who he is because he, uh, yeah, he deleted. He deleted it. 
started his own comment in shame after I put him in his place. <laughs> oh, it was funny though. It, it really cracked me up, and he was one of the first to uh, to comment. It was within like the first hour, I think. Yeah, it was pretty it was. pretty on the ball. Um, so the next question was on the Cyberpunk video. E3 is supposed to be about gameplay, and we didn't get one second of it. So let's calm down. Seeing Neo was cool, but it's about gameplay. We didn't get any of it. We got an hour of it almost last year, for God's sake. What are you talking about? They told you gameplay is coming. We, we, we've we learned a lot about the game. We've learned the release date. We've learned that, um, that Keanu Reeves is in the game. I mean, he's a big part of the game. And like, what, what, calm down. No, no, you calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I will get excited by this information. I'm not, we, we knew there wasn't going to be gameplay. God almighty, calm down. There's so many people who don't um, watch the actual videos before commenting. Yeah, there was a there was a ton of those. There's, types there of was comments. several of those. Let's see if I can uh, I can dig one out. Oh, this one, this one made me laugh, and I've thought I have thought about this sort of thing before. It was on the the cyberpunk video uh, again. Oh wait, was it? Is am I looking at the right one? Well, our, our yes, video was. our video wasn't about cyberpunk. It was about the hidden message in cyberpunk. Yes, and, that was and we were promoting the message that this is how. Posit- how, how you can be positive in the industry this and these are great role models C Project are great role models for other companies in the industry that was the point of the video it wasn't that Cyberpunk is going to be amazing because of the what they showed in three video that you thought it was yeah, it was Cy- 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 CD Project Red are a shining beacon in the industry and this is why video I mean watch the video and then comment idiot yep <laughs> so, <laughs> that's one um, from uh, Alt Oids Alt Oids would a doctor be willing to put someone into a medically induced coma until this game releases? Asking for a friend. Mm. And I've thought that before. Like, I don't want to wait. Can I not just go to sleep and then wake up? Well, but then on the flip side, if I enter a coma now and I wake up in 20 years, first thing I'll do, just yeah. like, oh, he's awake, he's awake. Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, isn't it? Uh, next, on the same kind of thing as my previous comment, Lab... Labstrosity Patapon. A celebrity in an RPG, all I wanted was to be immersed in the fictional setting. I don't know about this, CD Projekt. Well, this is actually a more legitimate concern, I think, because having celebrities in games does... Uh, you think about um, Ed Sheeran in Game of Thrones, right? That was so gratuitous. It was like, you can't even act, man. Just pick someone cool. Like, as soon as you get um, Ed Sheeran on the screen, it's like, this isn't Game of Thrones. What is this? That's Ed Sheeran. Get his guitar out and start singing. He did as well. It was like, oh, my God. I don't know. And I, can, I really I didn't get, mind the Ed Sheeran thing. I, I didn't mind it, but I get what he means when he says it's yeah. immersion-breaking. Yeah, because you don't, you don't see them as... As the character, you see them as the actor. I do get that, yeah. but it's still really it's, cool. It's still cool. It's cool for the the brand because everyone, all the press outlets now, like Channel Five had featured it the other day as well. Like Keanu's in this game, and like so many non gaming outlets are covering it because Keanu's in this game, and yeah. I guess it's good promotion. His picture for the- when he reveals himself, and he sits down, he takes his glasses off. That's been on so yeah. many thumbnails. <laughs> it's been everywhere. Have you got another one? Um, where is it? I just had it. Here we go. It, it kind of confused me because it's in, in fairly broken English. It's from Dor- Dorakai Yinvil. Yinvil. Yin- Yinvil. Okay. Thanks at Pretty Good Gaming. Thanks to you guys, we're going to have millions of people running around with crinkled old ladies with weapons and then a few like squinty eyed faces. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean. That's fair. I mean, uh, this is absolutely what I'm going to do. Don't blame us, though. We didn't make the game. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> why were you blaming? What, we didn't tell anyone <laughs> to do that, but... Uh, Just everyone wants to do it, because no, they've not had enough opportunity. Everyone, yeah, I mean, representation in video games. Where, where's the ability to play as an old lady? Boom, it's right fucking here. Yeah. For all the old ladies playing video games, you can now feel you've got a, you've got a voice. So next question on our CD project, I've shown everyone how it's done at E3 with Cyberpunk 2077 video uber game master says this game's gonna be trash hang on a minute there uber games masters <laughs> you're trash <laughs> Fucking come here talking shit about my favorite and un- most anticipated game <laughs> <laughs> oh man there's so many like that who just exist that to come in this game's popular so i'm going to hate it yeah well you can have your opinion but it's when you're, you're not you're not commenting on the video it's just i don't like this one we are very quickly running out of storage space on this card, and it's going to be a bit of a ball egg to um, replace it. So, last question. 
Oh, well, I, I clearly just spotted one here on the the Switcher 3 video. The Woosp. It's clear you guys don't pay much attention to Nintendo. Sad. Sad. You're right, I don't really. Yeah. Maybe if they, true. If they we, made we a like game the Switch, I cared though. about. We like the yeah. Switch. Yeah. And the, um, the, inf the official numbers from all the trailers released at E3 this year uh, are in. And the winner of E3 this year is Cyberpunk with a total of 17 million views. Second was Avengers with 16.5 million views. Jedi Fallen Order was third with 11.6 million views. That is the who Cyberpunk officially won E3 this year, this year by a narrow margin, half a million views over v Marvel's Avengers. And there you have it most viewed games at E3 2019 and that is the end of our E3 coverage for this week and probably for for this year we'll be back again next week for another regular podcast thanks for watching head over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming if you want to support the channel get early access to this podcast in future and on behalf of myself and Mr. Henry Soggy Toes <laughs> Cooper there <laughs> we will see you again in podcast number 22 next week until then bye for now